Alabama. It's the 1993 season opener for the defending national champions, the Crimson Tide of Alabama, as they host the Green Wave up to Lane. Hi, everybody. I'm Doug Bell, along with Ricky Davis, and welcome to the Alabama Sports Network for today's opener for the Tide and Tulane. Last year, we had so much fun, as did all Alabama fans, Ricky, but uh, what about this year? Everybody today mentioning repeat. Well, uh, repeating is very hard to do. Everybody's shooting at you as the number one team from last year. Alabama has a lot of guys to replace. Five off last year's defense are now playing in the NFL, so we'll have to wait and 1992 was a memorable season. Could they do the same in 1993? Well, time will tell. Pull out the calculators. Kickoff for the first game is near. For the Crimson Tide, it's all in the numbers. Their current winning streak of 23 is the longest in the country. At their current pace, they'll surpass the SEC record of 28 in a row set by the Tide teams of 78 through 80 on October 16th against Tennessee. But whoa, wait just a minute. That's seven weeks away. First things first. It always looks a little better over on the other side. I consider Tulane a very, I remember what happened to us the first half last year. I, some of you people may have forgotten, but I hadn't. We had a tough time. Speaking of streaks, Jay Barker has yet to taste defeat as the tide starting quarterback, whereas Mark is 17 and all. A number Jay would love to see grow, not to mention some of his other numbers. I want people to just start to think of me just as Jay Barker's going to thank you to know. I want people now to, to really see me as, as, a, as a good quarterback and really saying, you know, uh, you know Forgetting, you know, I guess in a sense saying, you know, that he can't throw the football. I think that I can throw the football. From 17 to 11, the number of consecutive losing seasons for the Tulane Green Way. And Alabama wants to make sure these guys stay down for at least another week. I mean, you don't know what they're going to do, and, and you're just going to have to go out there and be found in all areas to try to overcome whatever they might try to do. Five is the number of interceptions Antonio Langham needs to become Alabama's all-time interception king. And he's enjoyed his best days at Legion Field. I enjoy playing in Birmingham. I, I like Legion Field a lot. A lot of good things have happened uh, to me down at Legion Field. I've had several dreams so far that, you know, I went out and, you know, I started the season off on a good note. I had maybe like two interceptions, and I had one on the turn for a touchdown. So what about two? Is the departure of Alabama's two bookends, Copeland and Curry? Not to worry, the Chai defensive line is deep and talented. Now, all of a sudden, somebody's taking their place that's played very little. It's hard to believe that they're going to be as good as Curry and Copeland right away. Now, they may be eventually, and I think that they will. Finally, the number 80 is what significant. For, for Saturday, September 4th, would have been the 80th birthday, birthday, birthday of Paul Bear, Bear Bryant, who is certainly smiling everybody. somewhere above. So whether you're talking 23, 17, 11, 5, 2, or 80, the number that's most important is the one that can happen again. So while Alabama, so Alabama looks to rebuild on a uh, number one ranking, Tulane looks to rebuild on a two and nine season. And for more on the Green Wave, let's go down to our quarterback on the field, Scott Hunter. All right, fellas, this is the 1992 National Championship ring, given for Alabama's performance, of course, in 1992. But let me tell you something, 1992 is over with. I almost feel apologetic fans for saying that. So this ring, well, a lot of these players of Alabama are putting it in their pocket and putting it in their drawer because they know at the kickoff of this game today, 1992 and the national championship and all that stuff is over with because the Tulane players as well as the Alabama players are not thinking about 92. They're thinking this is the first game of 1993. And Buddy Davis, he brings his bucket in here and he thinks they've got a chance to win. Let's listen to what he had to say. Well, it's really it's an honor and a privilege to play a team of this caliber. And the thing that's most impressive is just the class that the uh, the program has. Gene Stallings has them playing very, very well. They're very disciplined. They're very organized, and certainly outstanding talent right across the board uh, for a program like ours that is in a building mode. To have an opportunity to line up with, against people like this, it's a tremendous learning process for us. You know, the, our athletic talent level has risen. Uh, a lot of the guys are untested. We'll play a number of true freshmen and an awful lot of redshirt freshmen tomorrow. Uh, they've never been in a, a ball game before, so there's a, a little fear of the unknown right now. But we've had a good preseason with the guys. I think they're confident in what they're doing. Certainly an opportunity to test themselves against the country's best is uh, something they're looking forward to. Well, let's take a look at some of the players today. In a second, first, Ricky, let's go back to you. Let's talk about this football game, the key to victories. 
All right, thank you very much, Scott. Again, Alabama, a 34-point favorite for those who care about point spreads. Let's let's look at the Bruno's keys to the game first for Tulane, Ricky. I think one of the things Tulane has to do is they have to get something going offensively, ball control, keep the ball out of Alabama's hands. They've also got to stop Alabama from making the big play, both offensively and defensively. And as Coach Steven said, they've got a lot of young players, so they need to maintain their poise today. A lot of freshmen and redshirt freshmen starting for Tulane as we look at the Bruno's keys for Alabama. Like Scott said, 92 is over. It's a new season, 1993. Alabama needs to put it, like Scott said, in the drawer. They also have little depth at fullback and tight end. And also on defense, they've got to replace Copeland, Curry, Odin, and London. And all those fellows will be starting for NFL teams this weekend. That's a, a lot of talent to replace. Let's go down to Scott Hunter now, who has more on a young quarterback for Tulane making his first start. Scott? Well, let's talk about some of the players on these two respective teams. Michael Batiste, Tulane's big defensive tackle, number 54. Now watch how the battle goes with him and Roosevelt Patterson and Matt Hammond. Of course, Tulane's got the shot. They have got the shot. Craig Randall, a transfer from Michigan, will be Tulane's starting quarterback. I just looked at him. He's 6'3", 242. He's bigger than most players on the football field. Over on the Alabama side, Alabama's defense, to me, revolves around Lamansky Hall, number 11, their weak outside linebacker. As he plays, so goes the defense. So watch that play over there. Quarterback, of course, all of you know Jay Barker. He needs to get off to a good start. He gave me a tip a few minutes ago. He said, watch what we do in the first couple of plays. We'll surprise you. All right, Scott, thank you very much. As we prepare for kickoff, the 1993 season, only moments away. A good look there, Gene Stallings. Last year knocked off Tulane 37 to nothing. 62 to nothing two years ago. Now Tulane won the toss. They will defer until the second half. And there's the boot to start the 1993 season. Kevin Lee feels it, and he's brought down around the 26-yard line. So there you have it. Jay Barker and the Alabama offense on the attack. A good look at Jay. A lot's been written. A lot's been said about his winning streak. There you see it. A beautiful day for football. Partly cloudy. Well, most of those clouds have burned off. The temperature is warm, but not unbearable. And a nice breeze is swooping through Legion Field. You see Jay Barker. The I formation behind him will be Chris Anderson, the senior from Huntsville. David Palmer wide left, Kevin Lee wide right. Barker out to David Palmer, the deuce. Tries to get loose, but he's brought down after a gain of about four. David Palmer, Ricky, says he's lost uh, about 15 pounds. He's back to his playing weight as a freshman. Once again, the Brunos, backs, and receivers for Alabama. We told you about Barker, familiar names. Terrence Lynch will start at fullback. Kevin Lee and Tony Johnson in a talented offensive front. Toby Shields leads the way. An All-American candidate at center. Some say the best in the nation. Second down and seven. Palmer in motion, it's the reverse. Here's Kevin Lee, wide open, and leading this way. Roosevelt Patterson, the speaker from Mobile, is gonna score a touchdown unless he gets caught from behind. He's marked down at the six yard line. Kevin Lee with that bursting speed. Great play by Alabama. Alabama, everybody that's playing Alabama knows that they wanna get the ball into David Palmer's hands. That time, David on a reverse, gave the ball back to Kevin Lee. Here we see the replay. Pitch back to Palmer. He gives it to Kevin Lee on the reverse. Gets a good block from Jay Barker, his quarterback, and cuts it up inside. There you see Jay making a nice block on the safety. Kevin Lee's a back in high school. Takes the ball all the way down to the six-yard line. Cedric Anderson makes the saving tackle for Tulane. That was a terrific block by Barker on Mike Stay, the talented defensive back for Tulane, and Terrence Lynch, his first carry. Brock down by Ruffin Hamilton. We'll be calling his name quite a bit. Where's number 44, the outside linebacker for Tulane? Terrence Lynch trying to fill the shoes of Martin Houston. Martin, a great blocker, number 35 from last year. Went into camp with the Pittsburgh Steelers this year as a free agent. Everybody knows that Terrence Lynch needs to have a good year this year for Alabama. 
to be able to run the ball like they like to do last year. Sherman Williams has checked in. Good look at that full house backfield. Patrick Cape has checked in at tight end, double tight end formation. And Sherman Williams looks the score, comes up a couple of yards short, gets maybe one. And it will be interesting to see does score. As we look at the Bruno's defensive front, Batiste and Milano have been around the last three years. We've seen them play against Alabama. Ruffin Hamilton, a talented uh, linebacker along with Shane Wiegand. And Stade will make lots of tackles. Willie Smith out of Mobile, the Alabama boy on the Tulane roster. Again, the full look back there. Sherman Williams rocks his celebration. Is he going to shake? They outlaw that. And no shake because that would have been a 15-yard penalty. That's a subtle shake from Sherman. Better be careful. We were watching the South Carolina game a little earlier today, and they got penalized for an unsportsmanlike uh, conduct penalty. But talking about the Alabama offensive line, you see they've got four of the five starters back this year. Good blocking up front. Tarrant Lynch just escorts Sherman Williams into the end zone for Alabama's first touchdown of the season. That may be the easiest touchdown Sherman Williams has this season. Michael Proctor missed only one extra point a year ago, and he starts out with a good one in 1993. So it's 7-0 Alabama. That didn't take long, the opening drive. Goes the full length of the field. The big play, the Kevin Lee reverse. Big play by Kevin Lee on the reverse, and Coach Stallings had wanted to get the ball into David Palmer's hands a lot. We'll take a look at the touchdown here. You see Jay Barker under center. There's a snap, and he hands off to Sherman Williams. He's escorted, gets a good block by Chris Anderson, number 33, allows him to turn the corner and go into the end zone. You may notice both Sherman Williams and Chris Anderson, as they run the ball a little more this afternoon, you'll notice they've both bulked up. They're much bigger. Their legs are bigger. They've been lifting a lot of weights. Let's go down to Scott Hunter. We'll check in with Scott in a moment. William Watts will kick off for Alabama, a true freshman from Pleasant Grove. Now, he turned down a full scholarship offer from Cincinnati, wanted to play at Alabama. He has impressed Gene Stallings with his deep and very high kickoffs, and Michael Proctor said he doesn't mind because it rests his leg and makes him fresh on the field goal and extra point attempt. So, number 15 will be William Watts, the first time Alabama fans have seen this youngster from Pleasant Grove. A short kick, fielded by Tulane at about the 11-yard line, brought out to around the 28. Kevin Lee, looks like uh, he has a cramp in the leg as we look at Craig Randall, the new quarterback, the transfer from Michigan for Tulane. Randall, a big kid, as Scott mentioned off the top of our broadcast, 6'3", 230 pounds or so. From the 28. Right up the pipe. Goes to lane, carrying the football is Kevin Tingley, the fullback. Now let's check in with Scott Hunter. We'll work out the bugs in a moment. Scott's microphone is not uh, following our orders. We'll be back down to him. 12 minutes to play in the first quarter. We have about six for Tulane on the first play. Randall taking his time. That time, a short game by John Hubert. Lake Charles, Louisiana, a sophomore. You look at Gene Stallings, 31 and 6 during his tenure at Alabama. And to think he started 0 and 3 since then, a lot of good stuff for Alabama. There's the scoring drive for the Tide. Five plays, 75 yards, didn't take long. And Sherman Williams responds with a touchdown. Third down and two. Lane stays to the ground, and it looks like they may have the first down. 
you know, Doug, one of the things Alabama's defense did so well last year was the front and the, the, uh, the rush defense. Alabama ranked first last year in the nation against the rush. You look at John Hubert as we look at the uh, Bruno's lineups for today. The backs and receivers. Randall, the quarterback. Hubert is the young man who's carried it twice so far. Will Urson is their main man, their main receiver, who's second on the all-time Tulane receiving list. You see the offensive line, which actually outweighs the Alabama offensive line. Tinsley is the center, and he's been around for several years. And there's the first down. So Tulane, three running plays have been successful running it right at that Alabama defensive front, which is uh, trying to replace some pretty good players. They are. Copeland and Curry now in the NFL, both first-round draft choices. But Alabama, Mike Dubos, the defensive line coach, Coach Dubos feels like they've got some good guys up front, but they're inexperienced. Kevin Tingley is the fullback, and John Hubert the tailback for Tulane. First down, ball on the 38. And there was a great fake by Randall as he shuttles it out to his tight end, and it's close to another first down. Kevin Cunane is the tight end who broke free. A nice play fake from Craig Randall. Good play fake by Craig Randall. He's a sophomore. He transferred here. You see, watch the play fake. Six on his hip. Rolls out around the left end and just dumped it off to his back who had slipped out into the flat. Just a great fake. Watch the fake here again. Comes out. Back slips out in the flat, and the tight end slips out in the flat. Tommy Johnson comes up for Alabama to make the tackle. And another first down for Tulane. Jeremy Nunley, James Gregory, really bottled up the tailback on that play, but he didn't have the football. Looking at the front for Alabama, Lomansky Hall, the leading tackler from a year ago. Gregory, the talented nose man, and Will Brown is speed on the outside. Rogers is back after the injury before the Sugar Bowl. Langham, the All-American, and of course all those guys in the defensive backfield are very, very talented. First and ten for the Green Wave from Alabama's 48-yard line. Randall taking his time, and there's the handoff to the fullback, Tingley. A junior from Richardson, Texas, 230 pounds. Just like Alabama has a player down, James Gregory, the nose guard. You see the brace on Gregory's uh, knees. Of course, he had a knee problem at the end of last season and during uh, practice just several weeks ago. He did. There you see him. Uh, he's a senior from St. Louis, Missouri, a real talented player playing right on the nose. A critical position for Alabama. We'll keep our eyes and see what happens after the trainers take a look at him, but came into camp this fall and uh, really has been pushed by number 51, LaRon White, at the nose tackle position. Up front, Alabama, Jeremy Nunley, number 73, really can play any of those front three positions. There you see Nunley right on the nose. There he is. You see him coming over and uh, shoulder right on his knee. Again, that's the knee, as Doug mentioned, that has the brace on it. There's Les Fowler, the orthopedic surgeon for Alabama, with the sunglasses on. We'll take another look at that play here, and you can see right there, the shoulder right on Gregory's left knee. Gene Stallings in the short sleeves today, a bit warm down on the field. Gregory's still down, and again, that uh, injury that he had last season and this season prior to the start of this football game was a sprained ligament, I believe. And let's hope that it's nothing uh, more serious than that and perhaps James can even return today. He's being helped off the field. There you see Les Fowler, Fowler in the uh, sunglasses, the Alabama trainer, white shirt. You know, one of the things last year, Doug, from the national championship, cha championship season is Alabama really was fortunate from an injury standpoint. Uh, lost a couple of players for maybe a game or two but really never had any serious injuries for the length of the season there's a good look at Craig Randall a young man who had some outstanding high school statistics in Michigan was recruited by Michigan and went there and a fellow by the name of Elvis Gerbach was quarterback and they had several other signal callers he saw his playing time would be limited so he transferred to Tulane where can I go and play a lot well Tulane needed a quarterback and again with really no experience he hasn't played in a football game since his senior year in high school he was redshirted at Michigan and set out last year when he, once he had transferred so 
this is his first game competition since his senior year in high school. Elverett Brown has moved over to replace Gregory at the nose tackle position for the tie. Staying on the ground, Tulane gets maybe a yard, and that was Tingley, the fullback. Well, Doug, one of the things about Alabama's defense last year was their pursuit, the ability to get after the ball. Lemansky Hall, left outside linebacker, holding up the play. Michael Rogers coming over from his inside linebacker position, making the play. But you know, the hash marks have been moved in this year a little bit, and that your wings of the flanks, Lemansky Hall, Will, uh, uh, Will Brown, Will Brown from Syracuse, New York. Thanks. Uh, both of those guys, former defensive backs, who are now playing outside linebacker with a lot of speed. Craig Randall was calling some audibles, and uh, everyone seemed a bit confused, so he calls the timeout. It's third down and about eight for Tulane. The ball right at midfield. And Randall talking things over with Buddy Thieven. There's the head coach with a headset kind of propped up on his head. Second year out of Dartmouth, where he really turned the Dartmouth program around. He was a former quarterback. And he realizes you come into a program at Tulane, they haven't had a winning season for 11 years or so. And uh, it takes time. And uh, as we mentioned in the in the pregame, we've got a lot of young players, guys without a lot of experience. And I think uh, quarterback there, he showed a lot of poise. Greg Randall calling a timeout at third and eight. They've got the ball at midfield in good field position. So showing a lot of poise there to call the timeout and not waste the play. Randall has thrown one pass. That was to his tight end on that great play fake. And we'll see if uh, he pulls another trick out of the bag. 9.09 to play in the first quarter, 7-0 Alabama. Straight drop back, and it's tipped. Elbert Brown got the big paw up there to knock it down. There's Elbert, 76. So Tulane will punch. Well, last year's Alabama defense, 50 sacks last year, 22 interceptions. Here you see Randall dropping back to get some pressure. Alabama coming with the blitz. Put some pressure. Will Brown putting pressure on him. Elver Brown from up the middle got his hands up and knocked the ball down. Michael Rogers also tipped that ball and then Elverett batted it down. So that was good defense for the Tide. You know, a lot of times, Doug, it's not so much getting to the quarterback, but it's putting pressure on the quarterback. They call it a quarterback pressure. That time, Alabama, Will Brown in there pressuring the quarterback, causing the incomplete pass. Chip Clark is the punter for Tulane. See what the holdup is. A flag is down. A lot of fans here waiting, wanting to see David Palmer, who's back deep to return the punt. As you mentioned a little earlier, Doug, uh, David has lost about 15 pounds from that he carried last uh, last year, and he feels like he's back into that freshman, uh, his the shape that he was in. But he feels like he's back in the shape that he was in his freshman year and has gained, regained a lot of the quickness that he lost last year. All right, after the clock problem has worked out, Tulane will punt. Chip Clark, the senior. Palmer calls for the fair catch on about the nine yard line, and that's where the tied second drive will begin. The opening drive went 75 yards in five plays. The big play was that Kevin Lee reverse. There's Mal Moore sending Jay Barker into the game. Let's take a look now at uh, products you can buy from the University of Alabama. We'll be back right after this. When it's time to put on the Roll Tide, be sure you're rolling with officially licensed products. When you buy Bama merchandise with this officially licensed label, you know you're getting high quality goods from world class manufacturers. A portion of the proceeds from all officially licensed products goes to support academic scholarships and the Paul Bryant Museum. Everybody wins when you buy officially licensed products from your Roll Tide retailers. So look for the officially licensed product label wherever you shop and Roll Tide. Sherman Williams gains four. Let's go down to Scott Hunter. The, what are you going to call the X-Factor? The injury factors reared his head. James Gregory, well, they're going to take him into the locker room and evaluate him. They think he's got a sprained ligament. They hope it's nothing worse than that. Ricky? Thanks, Scott. We'll keep our eyes. Keep us posted on if you hear anything on, uh, on James Gregory. Second down and six. 
Sherman Williams finds a huge hole, goes for a first down. Mike Stade made the tackle, and he'll make a lot of them. He has in the years past. That's not always a good sign when your defensive back leads the team in tackles. That's right, but watch this Alabama offensive line. Good blocking up front. Sherman Williams showing good vision. He cuts it back inside, takes it into the secondary. Mike Stade, the free safety, makes the stop. Sherman Williams lined up behind Tarrant Lynch. David Palmer in the slot. First pass for Jay Barker. Wide open the deuce. Couldn't connect on that one. Alabama caught Tulane in a man coverage that time. David Palmer one-on-one -on -one with the defensive back. David ran a post. Jay probably wishes he had that ball back, put a little more air under it. Jay Barker has been working diligently on his passing in the offseason. He's bulked up himself. A lot of these Alabama offensive uh, players have. They've worked hard in the weight room, but uh, he's really taken pride in what he says has been improved passing for him. Chad Key is in the ballgame now, wide receiver for the Tigers. The screen set up to Sherman Williams, who fumbles the football. Ruffin Hamilton recovers for Tulane. The first big turnover of the football game, and there you have it. Sherman Williams not holding on to that football. We'll see the replay, and boy, he had it way out. And Ruffin Hamilton comes up with a big play. And just a good play. Alabama setting up the screen. You see Barker gets it out to Williams. Football helmet right on the football that time, and Ruffin Hamilton right there to pick it up, and a big, big break for the Tulane Green Wave. Ruffin, the senior from Zachary, Louisiana. He's experienced a loss or two to this Crimson Tide football team. From the 24, Randall. Again, a nice play fake. Damian Jeffries with the pressure wide open. Touchdown to Lynn. Derek Franklin, a freshman out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. On the end of that touchdown pass from Craig Randall and the Tulane fans whooping it up. Well, they got a lot to celebrate. Here we see Randall again, a great play fake that held the Alabama secondary just a little. A well-thrown ball. He laid it out there where the only person that could catch it was his receiver. He goes up and makes the catch right in front of Tommy Johnson and Willie Gasson. Big play. They capitalize on the Alabama mistake and put seven points on the board. Bart Baldwin, a junior. We'll tie the football game. It's 7-7, so Tulane strikes back the big turnover. In one play, Craig Randall connects. With Derek Franklin, and there you have it. We're all knotted up. Well, I think that's uh, Buddy Teven showing a lot of confidence in his sophomore quarterback. The guy hadn't played in two years since his senior year in high school. Calling on the first play. Let him go downfield with the pass. Super play. at this from the end zone you'll see good play fake there kind of holds the Alabama linebackers and the secondary Randall rolls around and throws a perfect pass down into the end zone super catch by Franklin right in front of the Alabama secondary a big big break on the turnover but they capitalized on it Doug and put seven on the board let's emphasize that Randall has done a terrific job play faking because that uh, Will Brown was pressuring the wrong person in that play, and it really held the defensive backs uh, down a bit as he threw over that. Well, what it does is those little things, and that's what you build a winning program on, the little things, the play fakes, carrying it out. A lot of times you'll see when you're in a losing program, things like that, you get sloppy, but Coach Stevens doing a great job really emphasizing those little things that it takes to win the ball game. Bart Baldwin, number five, who kicked the extra point, will kick off for the Green Wave. 7.27 to play on a beautiful afternoon in Birmingham, Alabama. A kick into the end zone. David Palmer decides not to bring it out, so the Tide will have it first and 10 from the 20. One play is all it took in nine seconds. But seven points on the board. The big turnover, though, Sherman Williams on the screen pass. I've been impressed with Tulane. One of the things we mentioned in the pregame was them showing some poise, and they have really done that so far, Doug. Jay Barker on his first pass attempt. Overthrew a wide-open David Palmer. Then the very next play is when the turnover happened. 
Good look at Jay Barker. Kobe Shields, his All-American center. The rollout. Wide open, Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee caught from behind, but that was a beautiful play. Jay Barker that time just laid it out for Kevin Lee, and with that great speed, Lee ran under it. But again, just like with Craig Randall, a good play fake by Jay Barker holding the linebackers in secondary for Tulane. There you see Kevin Lee. Brandon Hamilton, the senior from Baton Rouge, was on the coverage and eventually drug him down. There's a play, play fake. Jay Barker rolling around to the right. Had a lot of room to run the ball, but laid it out, and there you see Kevin Lee running under it, makes the grab. Hamilton grabbed him and pulled him down, but not before he got to the 21-yard line. Barker back to Chris Anderson. Anderson gets a nice block from Tarrant Lynch, falls forward, breaks the tackle, and he's run out of bounds by Ruffin Hamilton. Chris Anderson's first carry a successful one. Really was, and Chris Anderson's really stocked up this year. He spent a lot of time in the weight room. He's 5'9", 187 pounds, but he got a good block from Tarrant Lynch on the corner. Lynch allowed him to turn the corner. Here you see Tarrant Lynch, number 45, makes a good block there, holds the block, buries the man, Allows Anderson to turn the corner. Anderson showing some second effort here, driving, pulling away from the tacklers. First and goal from the nine. Anderson finds a hole and a touchdown. Chris Anderson from Huntsville. Capacity crowd of 83,091 enjoying themselves, at least those rooting for Alabama. Most of them are, and Chris Anderson gets a big hole. Watch the offensive line. So Alabama answers after the mistake. They bring it down. They fake the reverse to Palmer. Anderson faked the reverse, turned it up inside, got some good blocks. There you see Chris Anderson, a senior from Huntsville, Alabama. Michael Proctor, two for two. It's 14-7. The Tide responds to the Tulane touchdown with a nifty drive of their own. And again, Kevin Lee was the spark plug as he was in the opening drive. Two big plays by Kevin Lee, one on the run, one on the pass, taking Alabama down and putting 14 points on the board. There you see the fake reverse to Palmer. Good cut up field that right there by Chris Anderson. 63 for Alabama, I believe that's uh, Matt Hammond. Matt Hammond out there leading the block, allowing, An allowing Anderson to turn it up inside. There's Jay Barker. Made the big pass to Kevin Lee. Matt Hammond has started 38 straight games at left tackle for Alabama, and if he continues on this pace and starts every game the rest of the year, he will break the record of Ozzie Newsom, who holds that distinction of 47 straight starts for the Crimson Tide. Scoring drive, 80 yards on only four plays, and it took just 45 seconds, still 6.42 to play in the first quarter. William Watts will kick off again for Alabama. A young freshman from Pleasant Grove. His first kick, kind of short, down around the 11-yard line. A high kick that again is fielded by Jeff Ligon at about the 10. He finds a gap. Squirts out to around the 29-yard line. Antonio Langham on kickoff coverage. Antonio is the safety on the kickoff coverage. He starts on the wide left end. Both kickoffs so far, Antonio has been forced to make the tackle. A great, great cornerback. Coach Bill Oliver, who coaches the Alabama secondary, calls Antonio Langham the greatest defensive back that he's ever coached and probably the greatest to ever play at Alabama. A major statement right there. 6.35 to play first quarter. 14-7 Alabama. Craig Randall, the Tulane quarterback. Right up the middle. Goes Gerald Sauer, a freshman from Baker, Louisiana. And again, take note of all, every time we say freshman for Tulane, they're playing quite a few. There's the scoring drive, as we mentioned. Only 45 ticks it took to score. Big Al, very pleased with that last drive. He likes quick ones. Craig Randall tries to respond. The Green Wave has a big offensive line, averaging right around 280 pounds. And again, right up the pipe. 
John Hubert. Going nowhere. Michael Rogers, Lemansky Hall, Elverett Brown all in on the stop. Here we see a good move, good push by the Alabama defensive line, just caving it in. Pushing the front for Tulane back. It looks like we have a, an injured player. One of the Tulane players is down at one knee. And one of the things, Doug, uh, on first down, they picked up some good yardage on all their possessions so far. And I think that's going to be a key for Tulane today is first down. Russ Meisner, the center, is the injured player as we get around to Scott Hunter. Well, Doug, Kevin Lee told me on that reverse, he went down to the seven-yard line, that the player who caught him had the angle on him. He was telling some of his teammates also. Well, after this last one, there was no excuses. Nobody had the angle. So one of his teammates came over, David Palmer, and said, hey, he had the angle on you on that time? Well, all Kevin did was just hang his head. Doug? Scott uh, likes Kevin Lee. Scott's from the Mobile area, and, of course, Kevin Lee from Viger High School in Mobile. And he is a speedster. That was somewhat unusual to see him get caught from behind. It doesn't happen often. Former track... Third down and five, and again, Tulane stays to the ground and goes nowhere. That's Gerald Sowell once again. So it'll be punt time for Chip Clark in the green way. The deuce, David Palmer, deep. Called for a fair catch on his first uh, punt. Hasn't had a chance to run one back in 1993. Returned one for a touchdown a year ago against Louisiana Tech here at Legion Field. A high spiraling kick, a nice boot. Palmer fields at the 10. Backpedal, comes forward, finds a gap. Up around the 31, every time he touches the football, the place goes crazy. A lot of electricity when that young man gets his hands on it. He is a great returner. He can really run the ball. Over David's career, he had three. We see a new Q QB come in for Alabama. That's Brian Bergdorf. Coach Stallings had said earlier this week that he wanted to get both Barker and Bergdorf in early in the game. Brian Bergdorf, the sophomore from Cedarton, Georgia. There we see Big Al doing his push-up. 14 points on the board. Big Al needs oxygen when they score a lot of points. The big fella gets tired. Bergdorf hands off to Sherman Williams, who again finds a nice hole and gains about nine yards. The offensive front for Alabama is busting it open. William Barger in the game now for the Crimson Tide. Sherman Williams, really a, a great running back, but he's got good eyes. That's one of the things that running backs have to have. There you see him waiting and allowing his blockers to set it up for him. He turns up inside. Mike State, number 15, just like last year, making a lot of tackles from his free safety position. Barger, a senior from John Carroll High School here in Birmingham, is playing at right guard. Bergdorf hands off again to Williams, who spins free. As we go down to Scott Hunter. The one thing that Coach Stallings told me he was going to do this season, unlike last season, he was going to play more than one quarterback. That's why you've seen Brian Bergdorf come over and just come on in just the third series. And we'll see more of him as the day goes along. Doug, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Scott loves talking about those quarterbacks. I think he's been over there talking to them on the sideline. Well, last year, Barker really took most of the snaps for the whole year. I think Bergdorf may have thrown the ball about 25 times. There you see Jay Barker standing on the sideline, 17-0 as a starter. Really a super person, a great leader. Bergdorf, his first pass to Tony Johnson's complete. Johnson knocked out of bounds. Tony Johnson, big tight end. One of the positions that Alabama's offensive coaches a little concerned about, tight end and fullback. Here you see good play fake again, faking to Sherman Williams after Alabama's had success running the ball to him. And a nice touch there. Good touch by Bergdorf, laying it out to Johnson in the flat. There's Bergdorf, a good look at the youngster from Cedartown, Georgia. And Tony Johnson, a big hoss, nearly 250 pounds. He's the number one tight end. The pitch back to Sherman Williams, who's already had a nice afternoon. 38 yards on six carries, make it a gain of uh, three yards and the first down, it appears. A flag is down on the play. We'll check that and check to see the uh, first down marker. And a 
holding, holding call. The first mistake for the Alabama offensive line. Let's see if we can pick it up here. We see the pitch back from Bergdorf to Sherman Williams. Parent Litch leading around the corner. May have called it on uh, on holding play. Offense. Still second down after a 10-yard penalty. It's kind of hard now with the way that the offensive linemen can play. They can get those hands out in front, and sometimes they'll call a hold on one play where uh, it may not have been one, and then they'll they'll let it go the next time. It's a tough, tough one of the toughest positions to play is in that offensive line. Sherman Williams six carries, 38 yards. He takes a breather. Chris Anderson lines up behind Terrence Lynch. Chad Key wide left. Lee and Palmer on the right. There's the handoff to Chris Anderson. Again, finds plenty of running room. Brings it back up. A gain of about eight yards. Just a great job by the Alabama offensive line. They're really dominating the front there. Running behind Toby Shields, John Stevenson, Roosevelt Patterson. As we mentioned earlier, four of the five starting offensive linemen back from last year. The only one missing, George Wilson, who's been replaced by John Clay. You see there, number 59. Michael Batiste, Reggie Davis, and Mark Milano have been busy. That's the front three for Tulane. Batiste on that last stop. A talented player out of Beaumont, a senior. And whistles being blown. Seems to be a foul up of some sort. The backfield judge in the secondary called the Dead foul. ball foul. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. We're still third down. That's his job. That backfield, the judge, the guy that stands back, the official that stands back in the secondary, his job is to watch the play clock. That time, Alabama let too many seconds run off, and you can see Gene Stallings. Those are the kind of mistakes. It doesn't matter what the score is on the scoreboard. You just don't want to make those. Again, it's a 25-second clock as opposed to 30 in years past. Uh, 145 and counting in the first quarter. Third down and eight. Bergdorf back to pass. Wide open, David. Palmer in and out of his hand. Brandon Hamilton on the coverage. And a great play by Brandon Hamilton. There you see a good look at Brian Bergdorf. He drops back to pass. Sees David Palmer. Looks like the ball might have been tipped just a little bit at the line of scrimmage. And Brandon Hamilton came in, put his helmet right under David Palmer's chin. That's hello. Here you see Bergdorf dropping the throw. Lays it out there. Palmer goes up, and then there's Hamilton. Putting it right on the chin. Ryan Deal, his first punt. Will Urson deep, number one for Tulane. A high, towering punt. Not exceptionally long. Urson calls for the fair catch at about the 16-yard line. Flag down on the play. Thrown back by Brian Deal, so we'll see what happens. Willie Parms was in on the rush. One of the things that happens a lot of times in that first game, mistakes, mental errors, penalties, one of the things that the coaches just, they don't like to see. Roughing the kicker on the defense. That's 15 yards and a first down. So mistakes on both sides, but that was a big one for Tulane and head coach Buddy Tevens. You hate to see that. Well, that's the kind of mistake that you just held Alabama. Alabama made a mistake. Five-yard penalty. Put them in a third and eight. They throw an incompletion, and then you rough the punter. Instead of you're getting the ball, you've just given Alabama another chance on offense. It was a good defensive stop for Tulane, but the defense now didn't get much of a breather. They're back on the turf. Brian Bergdorf in the tide on attack. Well, one of the things, they didn't even have the rush on, Doug. That's the thing. Somebody must have just Kind of went to sleep there and bumped into Deal and knocked him to the ground. Willie Parm, number nine, a quarterback, just kind of floated in there, gave him a shove, and that was 15 yards. Sherman Williams looks to the outside, wiggles his way out of a couple of tackles all the way up close to a first down. Great effort that time by Sherman Williams. Turning the corner, he got around rough in Hamilton, number 44, but Hamilton reaches back. You'll see Bergdorf on the pitch back to Williams. And if you'll watch there, you see Tony Johnson blocking Ruffin Hamilton. And watch Hamilton. He gets a hand out, grabs him by the jersey, but he can't pull him down. Williams turns it upfield and turns it into a nice gainer. 
45 seconds to play first quarter. Here's Sherman Williams again finding plenty of running room. First down Alabama. Yeah, Doug, one of the things that all, all great running backs have are eyes, just great eyes. There you see Sherman Williams. Look at his head. He's looking up into the line. He's allowing his blockers to make their block, sets it up, turns it upfield. A you know, running back needs to have good feet, but he's also got to have great eyes. Sherman Williams fixes his shoulder pads. Chris Anderson takes the pitch. That time could not get away from Ruffin Hamilton, number 44. There's a good look at the senior from Zachary, Louisiana. He's a great player. 6'2", 227 pounds, a three-year letterman for Tulane. Wanting this year, wanting to go out on a good note. His last year at Tulane. Into the first quarter with Alabama on top, 14 to seven, an entertaining first quarter of the 1993 season. 83,000 plus, applauding. After a fun first quarter, let's go down to Scott Hunter. Well, Doug, I think you'll notice in the first quarter, Gene Stallings played a lot of people at the skill position. He ran people he in and out, in and out. And one of the people you saw, number 19, Chad Key, is a converted quarterback. He moved from quarterback over to split in because really there was no place for him to play at quarterback with Freddie Kitchens in, of course, Mark and Bergdorf. However, he has moved up because of the injuries of Curtis Brown and Rick Brown, both who aren't dressed today. He's moved up to number three on the depth chart. So you'll see a lot of number 19, Chad Key, a converted quarterback that's put in. I don't think I could have made that conversion. I don't think so either because your hands weren't nearly as good as Chad Key's. Scott was always on the other end of the ball, throwing it out there. But that is, you like to see a guy, Chad Key, worked hard at quarterback, knew that he didn't have much of a chance to play, so went and asked Coach Stallings if he could move the wide receiver, and he's made a good conversion. There you see the score. Chad Key, by the way, a big target. He's 6'4", 210 pounds, so uh, he would make a, a nice target yesterday during the workout here at Legion Field. I noticed he was, there he is catching passes, and he has good hands. Uh, he really brings it in with his hands. A lot of receivers bring it into their body, but he catches everything with his hands, and uh, he might turn out to be a pretty good wide receiver. Well, I would think Buddy Teven's got to be somewhat pleased with the first quarter. They were able to get seven points on the board and there's a green wave if you've ever wondered what a green wave was but i think coach stevens has to be pleased i think his players showed a lot of poise in the first quarter they got the alabama turnover and then converted and put seven on the board a couple of mistakes though could prove costly for them that last rough in the punter being one of them second down Tulane is pointing at the alabama offensive line we'll see if they were drawn off I think their right looks like the, the right guard for Alabama may have leaned back, rocked back on his heels. That's John Stevenson at right guard. If you'll notice, a lot of the centers around the, uh, the country will wait and hear the, uh, the officials call here. But what I was going to say, a lot of the centers, they watch the, uh, the defensive line, and whenever a defensive lineman jumps off, they'll snap the ball, and the quarterback will hit a knee. We saw Barker do that a lot last year. Get you a quick five points. There's Chad Key coming back in at wide receiver. As Scott mentioned, the converted quarterback. We're still waiting for the call. Again, this is the first game for these officials, too. We have alignment picking up one side and coming across on the other side. We have no foul. It's a replay. Please reset the clock at 15 minutes. Reset the clock. Well, I think the Tulane coaching staff has a beef because our replay clearly showed a couple of Alabama linemen did jump. But nevertheless, we'll start, uh, start at second down and 10 once again. Officials trying to get it together. They're going to have another little conference here. <laughs> A bit of a mix-up as you see the rushing numbers. Alabama is running up big numbers. They're waiting for the clock to be reset. You see the passing numbers. A year ago at the Superdome, Alabama rolled up 576 yards of offense. Most of that was on the ground. 
152 yards today. And a lot of it in the second half. You remember the first half, Coach Stallings mentioned this. Last year in the first half, Tulane played Alabama the whole time. The hash marks have been moved. They've been squeezed in a little closer, six feet toward the center of the field, which the kickers don't seem to mind a bit. Brian Bergdorf looking for David Palmer, overthrows him. On the coverage was Willie Parms. Parms is the young man who was penalized for roughing Brian Deal. He made a good play that time. David Palmer trying to sell him. Palmer trying to sell him on a post pattern, and then he cut it back to the corner. You see Bergdorf looking outside, throws it out, but Parms in good position. Just like he's taught to do, you step right in front of the receiver and make the receiver run through you. That time a great play by Willie Parms. It appeared Tony Johnson was open underneath, but Bergdorf went for the touchdown, and Palmer was covered. Third down and 10, 14.53 on the clock, second quarter. There's the shuttle pass to Chris Anderson that we've seen so often through the years from this Alabama offense under Mal Moore, one of his favorite plays. To Chris Anderson, it's a real conservative and a safe play. Coach Moore probably not wanting, maybe expecting the blitz, not wanting to put Brian Bergdorf in a position where he'd have people in his face. So you go with the safe play, the little flip pass. pass. That time, though, Tulane defensed it very well. Michael Proctor, a 36-yard field goal a year ago. He was 6 out of 10 from 30 to 39 yards. No good that time. Brian Deal on the hold. So 0 from 1 from that range in 93. The score stays at 14 to 7, 14 to 11 on the clock. And Tulane rebounds. They had the, uh, the penalty on the rough and the punter. But that time, here we see a replay on the field goal. A lot of times with the soccer kickers, they'll start it out right, and bring it back in. That time, Proctor, the ball just didn't come back around for him. But Tulane, really, coming back after the penalty, shutting Alabama's offense down, forcing the field goal, and Michael Proctor missing the field goal. Just goes to show you a game is so much different than practice because yesterday morning or yesterday afternoon we were watching the tide work out. Proctor was uh, perfect from all areas on the field. And, of course, that was right in the middle of the hash marks. The shuttle pass had set it up where, really, for a kicker, it was the ideal location. But, nevertheless, it's still 14-7. Craig Randall wears number three for Tulane. He has a touchdown pass already this afternoon. Randall back to pass. Finds an open receiver who's brought down by Tommy Johnson. 87 is Derek Franklin. He caught the touchdown pass. So, so far, Randall and Franklin have hooked up nicely. And a nice play that time by Craig Randall. Taking a good, safe pass. You'll watch as Craig Randall drops back, finds his receiver, Throws a good one right out into Franklin. Franklin almost breaks away from Tommy Johnson. Johnson hold on, holds on and brings it down, but not before they picked up five yards. Franklin wide right, Tony Jacobs on the left. Second down and five. Randall back to pass. Not a lot of pressure. Looking for Will Erson. Erson has been the leading receiver on this Tulane team the last two seasons. Tom Randall feeling a little pressure up inside, but made a nice throw. If you'll watch here, you'll see Randall, he'll drop back. He waits and allows. You'll see Will Irvin, number one, coming out, Urson, coming out of the backfield, circling across the middle, and he's open, delivers the ball. Nice pass, hit him right in the hands, just couldn't hold on to it. Alvaret Brown pressured Randall. Third down and five. Back to pass. Jeremy Nunley. Randall escapes. There's the pass, and it's almost picked off. Randall shows good mobility for a big man. He really does. He got away from the blitz, got away from Jeremy Nunley, number 73. Alabama's left defensive end. Nunley comes in, breaks free, gets around his blocker. There you see some of the linebackers. There's Nunley, gets his hand out. Randall breaks away from him, trying to get the ball downfield to Will Urson, but... Randall moving well for a big man. He's about 235, 240 pounds, Doug, but showing really good mobility. Chip Clark is the punter. Mike stayed the up man for Tulane. Mario Morris 
was on the blitz that time for Alabama. It's a nice roll down to around the 34-yard line. Not a great kick, but he got a favorable roll. 13-04 to play second quarter, and again, it's Alabama 14-7. Jay Barker coming back in now for Alabama, talking to Mal Moore, the longtime offensive coordinator for the University of Alabama. He has a few championship rings in the drawers, doesn't he? I believe he's got six. <laughs> he and Bill Oliver, the secondary coach, both have six national championship rings. Patrick Hape in at tight end. You see number 38, young freshman. Shannon Brown in at tackle. As Scott mentioned before, Gene Stallings and his staff playing a lot of people, a lot of combinations. And we'll have to wait until the second half just to see how how much of a toll that takes on Tulane. Tulane obviously not as deep as Alabama uh, with their second and third teamers. A lot of young guys, a lot of red-shirted freshmen and true freshmen on the second group for Tulane. And Coach Stevens really sticking with his first group here, wanting to stay in the ball game. But we'll have to wait and see how the Alabama depth proves to be in the second half because it's really it is a hot and muggy day. Jay Barker and Bergdorf both have the uh, plays wrapped around their left wrist. The Alabama offense, uh, under the direction of Barker, Mal Moore, they have expanded their offensive plays, if you will, from a year ago, which was uh, limited, you might say. They're hoping to do more this year. With more receivers, Jay Barker, more experience. There's Sherman Williams. If he had gotten out of that, that would have been a wow. The tackle by 28 is Monty Burke, a freshman from uh, Morganza. A good, good play that time by the defensive front for Tulane. There you see Barker handing off to Sherman Williams. Monty Burke coming through, making a nice play. Tackles Williams in the backfield for a two-yard loss. Alabama has a couple of freshmen in on the offensive line. We'll check those guys. A lot of new faces getting some playing time this afternoon. Barker back to pass. Quick drop. There's Chad Key, who we talked about before. Five-yard gain. Doug, that time Tulane showing blitz, walking the linebackers and one of the, uh, the strong safety up. Looks like maybe Jay Barker checked off at the line of scrimmage, called a quick pass to Chad Key. There you see Barker, just a three-step drop, throws it out to Key, who makes the catch and turns it upfield and picks up a couple extra yards. Shannon Brown in at right tackle, a converted defensive tackle, playing offensive tackle next to John Stevenson. Third down and five. Sherman Williams in motion. Parker back to pass. Takes to one side, eludes the rush. Is that Kevin Lee again? You better believe it. First down Alabama. Lee has been the main man in offense today. Uh-oh, was it a fumble? Tulane says they have the football. He was down. I think the officials are saying the ball fumble caused by Kevin Lee hitting the ground, but it does look like one of the Tulane guys might have it. Good poise here by Jay Barker. Feels some pressure. Rolls it out of the pocket. Finds it settles right there in that open area. Good play by both Jay Barker and Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee finding the dead space there. Gets some pressure by Weekend number 47. Barker finds Lee. Well, that's what you want your receivers to do. When the quarterback feels pressure, you want your receiver to lock down, make himself visible to the quarterback, and that's just what Kevin Lee did. Impressive numbers so far for Jay Barker. Five out of six, 82 yards. Tries to improve on that. Again, feels pressure and overthrows David Palmer. That's twice that the deuce has been open. Flag down in the Alabama backfield. We'll check the yellow flag. Jay a bit disgusted with himself, I'm sure, after that pass and the one previously. Another hold on the Alabama offensive line. So that sends him back 10 yards, 11.45 second quarter. Here's Barker dropping back. He's got Palmer going deep again. Jay steps up into the pocket, lays it out, probably again, just like on the first one. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, still first down. On the first pass that he overthrew to David Palmer, Jay Barker probably wishes he had it back and he would put a little more air or just get the ball up and let, let David Palmer run under it. First down and 20. 
so much of passing is just a touch, Doug. I just, I know Scott knows more about this than I do, but so much of it is having the touch and the feel, and Jay is having a little problem today with going deep. There's the draw to Tarrant Lynch. The big fullback rambles forward for about three yards. Tarrant is the junior from Town Creek. Uh, played with Antonio Langham on some very, very talented high school team. Here's the play here. Tarrant Lynch, a converted tailback his freshman year at Alabama. He was a tailback, but with all the talent Alabama had at tailback, Tarrant made the conversion, bulked up a little bit, and started playing fullback last year. He backed up Martin Houston. We've got one of the two lane players down. But Tarrant Lynch bulked up some. He's been playing uh, fullback the last couple of years and has had a great year. Michael Batiste is down for the green wave. There's a good look at the senior from Beaumont. We'll check his injury. Getting back to Tarrant Lynch though, he had an injury a year ago and really got uh, Lazy, he said. He gained too much weight. He got over 260 pounds. There you see Batiste right there making the hit. He may have gotten his knee up under him, or one of the other players came in and fell on his knee, but Carol Lynch did. He got heavy during spring training, but went through quite a, a summer workout routine and got his weight back down. And again, he was a tailback his first year down here. And last year down at Tulane, he caught a pass and at about a 60-yard run after he made the catch, so Tarrant Lynch has some speed even at 230 pounds. I remember that. It was a big fourth quarter for Alabama a year ago, and Michael Batiste remembers that too. It's good to see him walking at, walking off the field on his own. 21 points in the fourth quarter a year ago for the Crimson Tide as they made a close game, a blowout, 37-0 the week before they played Tennessee. Second down, 17. Jay finds David Palmer that time. It'll be about third down and nine as we go down to Scott Hunter. Again, experiencing a few problems with Scott's microphone. We'll work out those bugs as Jay Barker comes up. Needing nine yards, perhaps eight yards for a first down. David Palmer in the slot. Jay doing in. Todrick Malone catching his first pass for Alabama. Todrick Malone from Etowah High School. All-Stater a couple of years ago. A very talented wide receiver for Alabama. There you see Jay Barker really put something on this one, drills it in, and what Malone got, got his hands out there, Doug, made the catch in his hands. Malone, ineligible last year, had to sit out for a year because of academics, but worked out hard, came back, and he has been one of the real shining stars for the Alabama receiving group in preseason practice this year. Highly sought after two years ago out of Etowah High School. All the big schools wanted Todrick Malone. He goes to Alabama, and there's Tarrant Lynch falling forward for a gain of maybe two. And Todrick Malone played high school ball with Freddie Kitchens, the Alabama, the number three quarterback at Alabama. I wonder if we'll see Kitchens today. Let's check into Scott Hunter. Okay, Doug, the thing I think you'll see different about Jay Barker this year, poise and confidence. All the way from spring training, I noticed it's grown and grown from the national championship year last year. And frankly, from the, being an old quarterback, I think that's the most important thing a quarterback can have, poise and confidence. Jay Barker hands off to Tarrant Lynch, who again breaks a tackle, finds a nice hole, and it's a first down Crimson Tide. Almost like an inside handoff on the triple option that time. There you'll see Jay Barker. Really just a triple option look there. Tarrant Lynch gets in the scene there in the offensive line, gets down into the secondary. There we see it from the side, and Tarrant Lynch picking up a nice gainer and another first down for Alabama. Cedric Anderson made the stop for Tulane. Chris Anderson, those quick feet, breaks to the outside. That time he could not break that tackle. 34 is Brandon Hamilton. Nice open field tackle by Brandon Hamilton on Chris Anderson. That play a little slow developing. Anderson waiting for his blockers to set it up. Tried to take it outside, avoided 
avoided a couple but couldn't get away from Brandon a Hamilton there you see Chris Anderson turning on the speed getting around the corner Hamilton coming up from his cornerback position making a fine open field tackle Chad Key wide right Todrick Malone wide left and off right up the middle and breaking tackles Horace Turner his first carry of the 93 season a young freshman out of Fort Payne one of those positions that the Alabama coach is a little concerned about behind Taron Lynch there's Torres Turner he's a true freshman there you see him coming right up the middle makes a nice cut back to avoid that first tackler takes it into the secondary to be tackled by Mike Stade Torres Turner a 6'1 200 pound true freshman from Fort Payne again as the game progresses we'll be calling the name of Mike Stade quite a bit junior from Baton Rouge makes lots of tackles for Tulane in the defensive secondary it's close not quite it'll, it'll be third down in inches Jay Barker getting the call Tarrant Lynch back in for the tide in the first quarter we saw that full house backfield with a double tight end set but they spread it out this time with Key and Patrick Malone. Forrest Turner, Terrence Lynch. Jay Barker keeps it himself and uh, Delane motioning as if they have the football. It's fourth down. Fourth down and inches. Alabama trying to use just the quarterback sneak. There you see Jay Barker taking the snap. Good push inside, though, by the two-lane front on defense. Got up under the Alabama offensive lineman. Really, Alabama lost a little bit of yardage on that play. It's fourth down, a little over a yard to go for a first. Michael Smart, a senior from Richardson, Texas. Let's see the ball coming out there. Jay Barker got it back, but the two-lane players thought they had it. Big fourth down for Alabama and two-lane. Fourth down and a long yard. Tarrant Lynch goes to the outside, gets the first down, and he drops the football, but he was down. And again, making that tackle, Mike Stade, number 15 for Tulane. Good play that time by Tarrant Lynch. We'll see him. He starts it up inside, bounces it out. Got a good block from Taurus Turner. Lynch turns the corner, and you can see the ball comes out after he hits the ground. Correct call by the official, Tarrant Lynch. Showing some good quickness, being able to bounce outside. Tarrant Lynch, a fullback with that tailback mentality. He was looking for daylight on the outside. Again, Chad Key left, and the pitch back. Chris Anderson finds a huge hole. Six for Alabama. Chris Anderson scores his second touchdown of the afternoon. It's 20 to 7. One of the things about this tall sweep. It allows your running back to wait until he sees a hole. The linebacker's overrun. One of the things you've got to do playing linebacker against that type of an offense is you've got to play your responsibility that time. Tulane overran the ball. Chris Anderson saw it, cut it in for a touchdown. And again, there's no celebration uh, this year in college football. The Sherman shake not allowed. Uh, they will penalize the... Uh, Team 15 yards, so uh, last year everybody grew fond of Derek Lassick doing his uh, Fred Sanford uh, heart attack routine in the end zone. Of course, you can't do that in 1993. They've taken some of the fun out of it, some people say, but nevertheless, uh, six is six. You know what I mean? We'll see the play here. Watch the two-lane linebackers. Watch them. They're streaking to try to get outside. They lose sight of Chris Anderson. He cuts it back inside. That's what you, you want your running backs on that tall sweep to read, to run under control. Alabama has two good ones in Chris Anderson and Sherman Williams. The senior from Huntsville scores his second touchdown of the afternoon. Chris told me the other day that he thought he would gain over 1,000 yards and Sherman Williams this season. He felt both were capable of that, especially with the offensive line they had in front of them. That's one of the things those guys realize is you've got to have a good offensive line to be able to gain yardage. Michael Proctor makes it 21-7. And the big key so far has been time of possession. We haven't seen Tulane with a football too much. Yeah. 
21-7 the score. What's the off for Alabama? William Watt. And deep for Tulane, Jeff Ligon. Scoring drive, 13 plays, covered 66 yards, and they ate up a lot of time. 6.05. There's 6.59 to play before halftime. There's a good look at Watts. Not a bad situation to have a man who kicks off to give your field goal kicker a little rest. This time the deepest of the three kickoffs for Watts. Fumbled. Ligon will come up with it. Goes nowhere. Brought down around the seven-yard line. Derek Franklin, the man who caught the touchdown pass, bobbled the initial kickoff. Good coverage there by Alabama special team getting down. That was one of the spots I know from last year that they wanted to to improve on. There you see Franklin bobble the ball a little bit. It's picked up. Good coverage there by Alabama. Nowhere to go. Well, watch the ball. Watch the ball pop out right here. Somebody put a hat right on it. Franklin comes over and knocks it out of bounds. Two-lane ball, but starting at their own five-yard line. Not a good position. You want to put your young quarterback, Craig Randall, in. Tracy High is number eight for Alabama. On the kickoff coverage, you see Randall's number so far. Hasn't played badly, but hasn't had the ball that much. Hand off right up the middle and bottled off to Kevin Kingley, the junior fullback. Mario Morris on the stop. Quite a story about Mario Morris. Had an appendectomy how long ago? About three weeks ago. People thought that he might be lost for the year, but he's made a, a great recovery. They used some new special procedure on him. They didn't have to make a big incision. So here he is back starting and playing in the first game. Modern science that is remarkable when you consider he was under the knife just three short weeks ago. Second down and ten for Randall and Tulane. And again, Tulane keeps it on the ground. That's Ligon, the man who returned the kickoff. Van Baden for Alabama. Out of Moss Point, Mississippi, a sophomore. What's the penetration Alabama gets there? There's Will Brown stepping up, stepping up in the hole. Number 51, Leron White at nose tackle coming in. Really puts you in a bad position when you're backed up like that. You've got a young quarterback. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on him. You know that Alabama's going to be coming pretty hard. Third down and 11. And again, that same play to Ligon right up the middle. Tulane trying to play it safe. Jeremy Nunley, Morris, stop Ligon. Tulane will punt. The crowd responds. Five oh one to play before halftime. Chick, Chip Clark down in that end zone that gets awfully loud. Nice angle. Good look from behind Chip Clark, who gets off a nice kick. David Palmer fields at the 45. Cuts upfield, and he's brought down around the 37. And the stop, a nice tackle by Jean-Paul Paradine. Jay Barker gets the play from Mal Moore. Brian Bergdorf led the Crimson Tide to their second touchdown. Four forty to play before halftime. The million dollar band has come down in the sidelines. I think there's more of them than there are Tulane football players. Marker back plenty of time. There's David Palmer. That time they connect. Palmer brought down at the four yard line. Nice pass that time by Jay Barker. Palmer running a post. Double coverage. You see Barker dropping back. He gets good protection up front. Waits for Palmer to make his break. Throws the ball on a line. White into his hands. Good throw here underneath and behind coverage. Good pass. Good catch by David Palmer. Cedric Anderson on the coverage. And Jay Barker, despite missing those two passes to Palmer, has impressed me. There's that stack formation with Lynch. 
Anderson and Sherman Williams. Sherman Williams prances into the end zone for another Alabama touchdown. Good blocking up front. You see the offensive lineman getting downfield. Two backs leading up. Good block by Chris Anderson and Tarrant Lynch opening the door. Sherman Williams picking his way through, stepping into the end zone. Like Doug mentioned a little earlier, a little abbreviated Sherman shake there. <laughs> That's right. Michael Proctor makes it 28 to 7. And the Crimson Tide in control here at Legion Field where the sun has set behind the press box. The field has been covered now by, sh by uh, shadows, you might say. The lights will go on shortly. A breeze continues to blow, and for Alabama fans, a pleasant afternoon so far. Well, you've got to be impressed with the way the Alabama offensive line has controlled the defensive front for Tulane. There we see some of the Alabama players on the sideline. There's Jay Barker. William Watts has gradually gotten longer and longer. This is his fourth kickoff. Getting a workout, the young man. Fielded at the five. Tulane trying to get better field position than they've had. Derek Franklin that time feels it cleanly. You look at the last scoring drive for the Tide. Only two plays, 37 yards, and Sherman Williams scores again for the Tide, making it 28-7. Sherman Williams has 57 yards on 11 carries and two touchdowns. Young man from Blunt High School down in Mobile, the state's all-time leading high school rusher. There's the reverse. A little trickery, Derek Franklin. Elbert Brown nearly had him for a loss. But Franklin got free for a gain of four yards, possibly. Tommy Johnson in his right cornerback position makes the tackle. You'll see, kind of coming out of the Alabama playbook, Albert Brown couldn't quite get his hands on him. You see a good block by Randall there. Tommy Johnson, number 10 for Alabama, stayed at home, right cornerback position, made the tackle. Derek Franklin out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Tommy Johnson from Niceville, Florida, the young man on the tackle, almost went to Tulane. Second down and six. There's a nice hole and a first down for Tulane. That's Gerald Sowell, the freshman from Baker, Louisiana. Bulling his way forward. That guy is a bull, isn't he? 242 pounds, six feet tall. But a good run that time and nice work up front. Watch him, he takes the handoff. He kind of waits and lets things clear out. Then he cuts it back in. Gets a good block up front into the Alabama secondary and picks up a first down for Tulane. Robert Bodine is number 73, the right guard who really laid a nice block in front of his uh, fullback. Closing in on two and a half minutes to play before halftime. Randall again with a nice thing. Wide open is tight end over the middle. Number 80, Kevin Cunane. Cunane's the guy who caught that first pass out of the backfield earlier in the ball game. That time they caught Alabama. Tulane caught Alabama with a four deep coverage. The tight end right down the middle. Nobody at home. Makes the catch. Goes down. Picks up another Tulane first down. Craig Randall has been a cool customer this afternoon. Another nice fake. Canane that time is covered, and there goes Randall. Scampering up close to a first down. Good play. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm impressed with Craig Randall. He's showing a lot of poise, Doug. This time you see him. He makes the play fake again. A good play fake. Holds Alabama's linebackers in. He rolls out. This is the same play they ran early in the ball game. This time he saw some room downfield. Turned it up and picked up right at a first down. He might be just a little bit short, but right at the marker. 
That was the play they ran earlier, and Kunane, the tight end, was covered that time by Sam Shade. So Randall just pulled it down and uh, got close to first down as we go to Scott Hunter. Now, once again, the X Factor has reared its ugly head. You heard me say that earlier. Lemansky Hall, number 11, out, Alabama's outside linebacker, down on the sidelines. I don't know how bad he's hurt, but right now the trainers are looking him over. Again, Lemansky Hall is down. Thank you, Scott. Let's hope uh, that is not serious because Lemansky Hall, one of the uh, nominees for the Butkus Award given to the nation's top linebacker, was the leading tackler a year ago, and they can ill afford to lose a man the caliber of Lemansky Hall. And what he provides Alabama is with that great quickness and speed on the outside, along with Will Brown and Andre Royal, who also play outside linebacker. There we see Lemansky Hall. Was a defensive back out of, uh, out of high school, converted to an outside linebacker position, as was Andre Royal. Has great speed, 6'1", 227 pounds. Lemansky Hall, you saw he uh, has a shaved head. And uh, Jeremy Nunley, another defensive player for Alabama, shaved his head and a couple other guys. And they were doing that in hopes of everybody doing it. But uh, Chris Donnelly and others said no. I never agreed to get my head shaved. I'll do a lot, but not that. And uh, so half the guys have shaved heads, others do not. There's the first down numbers. Alabama 11 to 6. Running up big numbers on the ground. Jay Barker, a fine afternoon passing. There's another one. Marcus Mooring. Marcus Mooring is 35. Another new face, junior from Columbus, Georgia. Very pleasant now at Legion Field. Temperature's just perfect. Jeremy Nunley jumps. Greg Randall falls forward. They gave Randall a first down in that last scamper, so it's first and 10 as we see what the call is. By the defense, it's first and five. Jeremy Nunley jumps across. So, so Tulane continues their march. The Tulane defense is praying that their offense keeps the ball for the remainder of the half. They've been on the field a long time this afternoon. First down and five. That was a foul up that turns into a nice game for Tulane. John Hubert, sophomore tailback from Lake Charles, Louisiana, ran into his quarterback but turned it into positive yardage. A little bit of a collision in the backfield. We see Craig Randall going back to make the handoff, and it's like somebody's making the tackle right there. But Randall showing some poise, got the ball back, turned it in what could have been a, a disaster or a mistake into a nice game. A big roar from the crowd as the score from Arkansas State, Florida is announced. Apparently Arkansas State has uh, scored first touchdown of that game, but that will surely change. Craig Randall, the rollout, has an open receiver. Is that Franklin again? Hammered down by Antonio Langham. Derek Franklin. We'll see where the officials mark it. He was out of bounds, so comes back to the original line of scrimmage. Here you see Randall makes a good play fake, turns the corner, gets outside. And what his receiver does, he comes back to the ball. There you see Antonio Langham coming up on the corner, makes the hit. Good play by Tulane. Held on to the ball even after the big, the big pop by Antonio Langham. We've been told Lemansky Hall has a bruised shoulder. May not return this afternoon. You see the time. Randall rolls out. Looking in the end zone, finds Will Erson. Incomplete, but for a moment, Erson appeared open. The time Erson, Alabama caught Alabama in a, a two-deep coverage, 
Antonio Langham allowing him to get behind him. Langham is supposed to, he puts the hit on him and then Chris Donnelly coming over from his free safety position. Here you see Randall dropping back to pass. See him looking down for Urson. Here you see Chris Donnelly coming over, making the good play. That's the way the defense is set up. Langham has short, flat responsibility. Donnelly's supposed to come over just as he did. Nice play by Chris Donnelly, who transferred to Alabama a couple of years ago from Vanderbilt. The old DB, Ricky Davis, gets excited when talking about those fellows back in the defensive secondary. And Mario Morris drops to lane for a loss. John Hubert goes down. Mr. Lane will try a field goal. Bart Baldwin will come in. And from 45 yards, we'll try to make it a 28-10 football game. Forty-five yard attempt. Bart Baldwin. Looks good. And it is good. Could have gone a few extra yards. Bart Baldwin converts. So Tulane. An, again, a nice drive led by Craig Randall, the quarterback, who was very poised under the pressure. 28-10 the score. 49 seconds to go before halftime. Buddy Tevens pleased, has to be pleased with his, uh, his two-lane team, even though it's 28-10. to 10, That time they took the ball, drove it down the field, came up with some big key plays, and put three points on the board right here before the half. Here we, here we see the field go. Good snap, good hold. Gets the ball up. Never any question. Perfect. Straight down the middle. Will Brown was converging in from the outside and nearly got a hand in that football. He's awful quick from that outside uh, post. A converted uh, defensive back who plays linebacker now for Alabama. Same thing with uh, Lemansky Hall. And Andre Royal. Andre Royal also. We're watching right here at the kickoff in uh, in the past what teams were allowed to do, Doug. As you know, I don't think that Tulane will do an onside kick here, but teams could put 10 men on one side. Uh, you can't do that this year. You've got to have at least four four men on each side of the ball on the kickoff. So in the event of a onside kick, we'll have a little different look this year in college football. Baldwin should let it rip. Nope, kind of squibs it. There's David Palmer. Always seems to come up with it on the kickoff. Cuts back. Gets a block. Back up the middle. And it's fun to watch that guy maneuver. Up to the 35-yard line, David Palmer. 39 seconds to go before halftime. He returns 17 yards. 17-yard return for David Palmer. The Tulane scoring drive. Nine plays, 51 yards. And again, Bart Baldwin. 45-yard field goal. David Palmer, just an unbelievable athlete. There you see Brian Bergdorf coming in. David Palmer played quarterback in high school. He played, played wide receiver. He played running back. Don't know that we'll see him at quarterback today, but as, uh, as Alabama fans know, he does line up under center sometimes. David Palmer played his high school football right here at Legion Field for Jackson Olin High School. Uh, Bergdorf was looking for Palmer. 33 seconds to play before halftime. Like there was some kind of a mix-up. Brian pointing downfield. I believe that he and Palmer were on the same uh, same wavelength that time. There we see David Palmer. Palmer and Chad Key go to the sidelines. Kevin Lee, Hoderick Malone. Wide for Alabama, Bergdorf. Up the middle, Forrest Turner. Goes forward for about eight yards. Forrest Turner, a true freshman. Out of Fort Payne, Alabama. Picked up a nice gain that time. Took it up to about a yard short of a first down. Got to be a big thrill for these freshman players who this time last year were 
playing high school football now to be playing in front of 80,000 people. Time is ticking away. They barely got that play off, and uh, Torres Turner finds a huge haul. Falls forward, and uh, he'll like that when he looks at the statistics a little bit later. A nice run to end the half for Torres Turner. And that does it for the first two quarters. Gene Stalling and the Crimson Tide walk off the field with a 28-10 lead. Scott Hunter? Buddy, you've got to be proud of your football team. You're playing pretty good. The kids are playing hard. We just we a lot a couple big plays early and a big penalty hurt us and uh, we broke down the coverage on two occasions. Other than that, we're playing decent football. We've got to keep them off the scoreboard a little bit. Your offense worked on that Alabama defense. Well, they're, they're executing. We just told them to concentrate, play at a time, don't worry about the score, just execute in that last drive. We did. We've got to do that uh, more often in the second half. Okay, we'll see you in the second half then. Okay, Doug, Ricky? Thank you very much, Scott. Buddy Tevens is a marathon runner. He runs in a lot of races down in the Crescent City in great shape, a very disciplined human being. And I think we're seeing that in his football team because uh, because uh, they've shown that uh, they haven't uh, been harried or hurried or made a lot of mistakes. I think one thing he's saying and not worry about what the score is. I think that's a key thing for them to do is 28 to 10. But I know he's going to go in. He said, we took that last drive down there. We got three points out of it. Don't worry about what the score is. We start the second half. Let's play like it's zero to zero. Let's just go out and get better. Well, coming up at halftime, of course, is the uh, Million Dollar Band, but uh, all the musical groups at Alabama are very talented. In fact, the School of Music at Alabama in Tuscaloosa is uh, one of the best, as we take a look at that right now. For another one of Alabama's touchdowns. This is live action. Derek Franklin takes the kick out to around the 22-yard line as we check in with Scott Hunter. I don't know, but it's been 34 years since Tulane scored in Alabama. Well, now they've gotten 10 points in the first half. Can they, can they continue to work on uh, the Alabama defense? Well, we'll see if Lemansky Hall is in there. That could be a big key in the second half. Thanks, Scott. Uh, you see the Bruno's halftime numbers, rushing yards for Alabama, a huge lead. And passing also, total yards, it's uh, getting rather lopsided. In time of possession, that's the big key. Alabama has had the ball for five more minutes. Greg Randall. Again, the quarterback for the Greenway. Kevin Tingley, his fullback. They got crossed up a bit. Tingley gets hammered down. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. You know, Tulane was a member of the Southeastern Conference up until 1965. Since they went the independent route, their football fortunes have somewhat gone down, but they're trying to get it back under Buddy Tevens, a tenacious fella, who in his two years there has produced a lot of big players. A lot more speed. Lemansky Hall is back in the football game now. That's good news. Brought down quickly by Michael Rogers. Michael Rogers, one of the inside linebackers for Alabama, here you see him on the right side of your screen. Watch him shoot up between the guard tackle. Comes through, beats Craig Randall back to the handoff. Untouched, the it's junior from Laverne. Michael Rogers is the brother of Lamar Rogers, an All-American at Auburn. And second round draft pick a couple of years ago of the Cincinnati Bengals. Michael Rogers, a key figure on the defense, the number one ranked defense a year ago. Randall over the middle. Close to a first down, but I think he'll be marked down a couple of yards short. John Hubert on the receiving end. But again, good poise by Craig Randall. Dropped back, found his receiver open across the middle. It's going to be, as Doug said, just a little bit, little bit short of the first down. So watch Craig Randall as he drops back. He's looking downfield. Waits for his receiver to get into the open area and just lays it right in between four Alabama defenders. Chris Donnelly, Sam Shea, Willie Gaston all around. It's fourth down and three. So Chip Clark will come on once again. He's been a busy man this afternoon. David Palmer will field it at the 19. Breaks to the outside. And Tulane does a nice job of bottling up David Palmer. The ball squirted free, but it was after he was down. And again, Tracy High wears number eight. You saw him blocking. That's a young man we uh, didn't see a year ago. 
And there we see Blair Canale, number 24, a redshirt freshman from Memphis, Tennessee. He's a safety, tore his knee up last year, missed the whole season, but an outstanding prospect for Alabama. Blair went to the same high school as John Stevenson, Christian Brothers, which has produced a lot of talent. And he was highly sought after out of high school. Uh, many people considered him one of the top uh, defensive back uh, prospects out of Christian Brothers. But as you said, he had that uh, ACL injury, anterior cruciate ligament that brings down many, many players. Tide fans have had lots to root about over the last uh, two seasons. 11 and 1, 13 and 0. A win in the Blockbuster Bowl, the national championship in the Sugar Bowl a year ago. And Jay Barker has been the quarterback in both of those big victories. And uh, it appears his streak will go to 18, 18 and 0 as the starter of the Crimson Tide. Eight out of nine for Jay this afternoon. Chris Anderson. Behind Jay Palmer in motion. There's Anderson with a huge hole, but uh, good defense. And a nice tackle. Number 23, Wilbert Gilmore. This time Alabama, a little different look. Chris Anderson lining back as the sole setback. Right directly behind Jay Barker. Palmer went in motion, trying to pull the defense with him, but Tulane made a nice play. Here you see it. There you see Chris Anderson, Palmer back behind, expecting maybe the pitch. Watch uh, 77 come through on Mike Stade. Again, Palmer in motion. And uh, he faked it. Didn't hand off to Kevin Lee that time. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Good penetration by Tulane. Getting upfield, that right side of the defense got back into the offensive backfield and kind of disrupted the timing of that play. Here you see Jay Barker flipping it back to David Palmer. Takes the handoff, turns it up inside, trips over one of his linemen there. Brings up a third and about eight yards for Alabama. The reverse, uh, when Palmer handed to Kevin Lee on that first possession, went for 50-some-odd uh, yards in the first quarter. Barker, eight out of nine. Make it uh, nine out of ten. David Palmer catches it for a first down. The Tulane defenders... Uh, we're making a case that uh, he didn't catch it, but it appears that he did. It was good coverage there. You see Barker dropping back. He gets good protection from his offensive line. David Palmer running a little curl pattern right there in front of the defensive back. Good throw by Jay Barker. He throws it low and inside where Palmer's the only one that can make the catch. Picks up an Alabama first down. Willie Smith from Murphy High School in Mobile on the stop. Jay Barker, broken play, it appears. Falls forward for a gain of one or two. Look, I think what Alabama is, is doing is they're kind of going back to the 70s. It looks like they put in <laughs> somewhat of a, a wishbone scheme there that time. Jay Barker faked the inside handoff to Tarrant Lynch and then took it down the line of scrimmage, and he had his, had his pitch back back there. And, uh, and Chris Anderson, who could have gone back to, but Jay turned it upfield for a short gain. Ground, Chris Anderson goes forward for a gain of four. It'll be third down and three yards. Look, one of the things that the Alabama players Parker is that he has so much confidence in the huddle. There you see good blocking there by the Alabama offensive line. Chris Anderson turning it up inside, but they've got a lot of Alabama's Offensive players have a lot of confidence in Jay. He does a good job there. You see the third down conversions. Alabama 5 for 8 today. Parker back to Chris Anderson. He has nowhere to go. He's really stacked up. And there's Mr. Stade one more time. Mike Stade out of Baton Rouge. He's a junior. And he's chalking up lots of tackles. He really is. He does a great job from his free safety position. Last year down in Tulane, he made a lot of tackles. Here's Jay Barker takes it back. Hands it off to Chris Anderson. Tulane got penetration there. Got up in there. You see Mike Stade holding Chris Anderson, stopping him, stopping him short of the first down. Fourth down and two, so Brian Deal will punt. Second time this afternoon. And the fair catch called for. 
and it will bound into the end zone. Stage threw up the uh, fair catch signal to delay the defenders, and the ball bounded into the end zone. So Tulane will have it first and 10 from the 20. 8.47 to play third quarter, and there you see the score. Alabama on top by 18. Lomansky Hall is back in the football game. We were watching in the second quarter. You saw him down in the sidelines with a bruised shoulder, but Lomansky is back. James Gregory is not. Left with a knee injury early in the first quarter. Elverett Brown is the man on the nose for Alabama. Batted down and up in the air by uh, Nunley. Jeremy Nunley. And it was close to being an interception. There you see Jeremy Nunley, one of the unsung heroes. Kind of played in the shadows last year of Copeland and Curry. Dropped the snap there. And there you see Lemansky Hall, who got his hands up, batted the ball down. Shoulder looks like it's okay there, Doug. Yeah, I gave Nunley credit, but it was Lemansky Hall. Great angles we're getting from the uh, end zone cameras. Really brings you close to the action. 8.39 to play, third quarter. And again, Tulane, Gerald Sowell has nowhere to go. He's chopped down for a gain of possibly one yard. Damian Jeffries, one of those defensive linemen that Mike Dubos, the defensive line coach, really working hard to try to step in and replace John Copeland and Eric Curry. Jeffries is a, a, a junior from Silicon, Alabama. He's 6'4", 270 pounds. And made a nice play on that one, getting back into the backfield. Jeffries lined up. On the outside, where you might have seen Eric Curry a year ago. Nunley, Elbert Brown. Here comes Will Brown from the outside, converging. Wide open, and again, credit the quarterback for keeping his poise and finding his open receiver, Scott Sanchez. Craig, Craig Randall staying back in the pocket in the heat of the pressure. Watch, you see him here. Does the play action. Takes his time. He sees the rush coming, but he delivers a perfect pass out into the flat for a first down for two lanes. He knows he's going to get hit, but he stays in, delivers a good ball, picks up the first down. Nice play by Craig Randall. First and 10 from the 37. Again, sticking with that play up the middle, Gerald Sowell, and that's going nowhere fast. Time is ticking away. 7.45 and counting. That play just hasn't worked. No, it hadn't that time. Ozell Powell, one of the young off defensive linemen for Alabama. He's a red shirt freshman, number 78. Got into the backfield, got his hands on the ball carrier, and disrupted the play. Randall this afternoon is 6 out of 12 for 89 yards in that touchdown toss. No interception. Sure, that's what Buddy Tevens uh, wanted from his young quarterback. No mistakes. Oh, Will Erson had it in his mitts and dropped it, and it's intercepted Alabama. Tommy Johnson comes up with a loose one. Will Erson had it right there, but Tommy Johnson was Johnny on the spot. A nice throw by Craig Randall. You can't fault him on that play. Delivered a good pass, just came off the shoulder pads of his Good safe pattern, just a quick out. Right in the shoulders, Tommy Johnson coming up. Makes a heads-up play for the interception. Here you see Randall again. Watch Tommy Johnson coming wide awake. Got his hands out there and made the interception. Jay Barker, again a quarterback. And he's sacked from behind. Willie Smith. Let's go to Scott Hunter. I've got the typical Alabama fan here. Has your husband, wait a minute now, has your <laughs> husband put up the Sugar Bowl tape and gotten ready for 93 yet? No, he'll enjoy that the rest of his life. Well, who is your husband? Scott Hunter. <laughs> How you like this, guys? I sprung one on you, didn't I? <laughs> That's my cheerleader. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Back to the game. <laughs> Scott's full of surprises, let me tell you. Second down and 16. Barker sacked on the last play. Scrambling out of trouble. Tucking it away. Taking a lick. Picking as he falls forward. Did he get a first down? He just might have. Crowd likes the play from Jay Barker. Well, Doug, you mentioned earlier in the game 
But Jay Barker had spent some time in the weight room this summer. He'd really bulked up. You see him. He feels some pressure, steps it up inside, decides that there's nobody open, tucks it away, and watch him deliver the blow here. Takes it, bounces off, gets a good block from Joey Harvell there. And very close to a first down. There you see him again. Gets some blocks downfield. There's Tony Johnson making a block. Defensive back didn't wrap up. That was Wilbert Gilmore. And they hand off right up the pipe. Terrence Lynch. John Stevenson, number 69 there. He's down on the play. Alabama trainer is coming over to take a look. There's Les Fowler. Team orthopedic surgeon talking to him. John's had a, had a great career at Alabama. 6'3", 275 pounder from Memphis, Tennessee. You see the black things on the, on the legs of the players. The Alabama offensive linemen wear these big knee braces to try to prevent just what happened there. According to the Sporting News college football publication, the Alabama offensive line is the best in the country. As we go down to Scott Hunter. Well, Doug, I think all of you know the artificial turf is a little tougher surface to play on than grass. They'd like to change Legion Field here to grass, but there's so many high school football games, so many concerts and other activities on it, the artificial turf stays here on Legion Field. Words out, though, that if the soccer games and the Olympics come here, they might pull this turf up and put down grass. We'll see what happens if the Olympics come here, but uh, this stuff certainly is something that uh, I believe contributes to more injuries than it should be. As John Stevenson gets carried off the field, we hope that's not serious. Again, the uh, city of Birmingham is up for that uh, pre-Olympic tournament. Uh, of course, the final four teams will go on to Atlanta in the 1996 games. And Sherman Williams breaks free and gets close to a first down. Another strong run from Sherman Williams. But when and if they do get that game, they will wheel in artificial turf on the, uh, the big uh, wood placards like they did in the Silver Dome for the World Cup a few weeks back. Sean Jones on the stop for Tulane. That would be somewhat unusual to bring in grass and lay it on top of the uh, turf, but it's been done and successfully as Sherman Williams appears a bit shaken up. Of course, the Crimson Tide plays on grass, the PAT in Tuscaloosa. Chris Anderson. Goes forward, gets the first down as the drive stays alive for Alabama. Nice piece of running that time by Chris Anderson, picking his hole. Not much where he first wanted to go, so he bounced it back inside and picked up a first down. Chris Anderson, not real tall. He's only 5'9", but he goes right at 190 pounds. Started a lot in his freshman year. There's Roosevelt Patterson, number 77. Looks like he might have gotten a finger in the eye or something. He's holding his holding his face, considered by a lot of people in the NFL as one of the top offensive linemen around. He's big, he's got good quick feet, and that's what those NFL people look for in offensive linemen. Roosevelt Patterson played at Viger High School, and they won a 6A state championship a few years back. A nice young man, a gentle giant, except when he's on the football field. He takes pride in this Alabama offensive line. As we said before, ranked by many as the best in the country. Chris Anderson. Let's look at some uh, scores from around the conference. The Brunos scoreboard. Florida leads Arkansas State at halftime by only four. That would be an unbelievable upset. South Carolina does upset Georgia in Athens. A terrific football game that we watched earlier on television. 23-21. A&M ranked in the top ten. Beats Curly Hallman and the Tigers. 24-0. That was at College Station. Jay Barker trying to bring the tide into the end zone one more time. Terrence Lynch goes forward on the delayed draw. Four minutes to play third quarter. Reggie Davis, the senior nose guard for Tulane, in on the stop. Here we see the handoff from Barker to Terrence Lynch. Lynch starts outside, kind of trips a little bit there, but maintains some balance, got across. The 10-yard line, almost to the nine, is going to bring up a, a big third down, and we'll say it's a long three for Alabama on this drive toward the goal line. Third down and three. 
Aaron Lynch and Chris Anderson in the I formation. That's Lynch taking the handoff. It's bottled up. He's short of the first down. Gains one yard, so it'll be fourth down and two. Michael Proctor now on for a field goal. John Stevenson, we've been told, has a strained ligament in the left knee. That's how far they have to go for the first down. That's why Proctor's in. The ball's marked at around the 16, so it'll be a 26-yarder. A year ago, he was 7 out of 7 from this distance. And make it 8 out of 8. From the 20 to the 29, Proctor is perfect in his collegiate career. And the score now goes to Alabama 31, Tulane 10. Tulane defense got tough right down toward the goal line. But Michael Proctor comes in and delivers the three points for Alabama. Good sustained drive there by Alabama. Taking the ball pretty much the length of the field. A couple of key passes by Jay Barker and a nice run by Barker where he broke a tackle and picked up a first down. Scott, what do you have? Well, Doug, I think I've been most impressed with Alabama's offense. They got stronger and particularly in that third quarter. I think they've gotten stronger as the games got along. Have we seen a reversal of an Alabama team from a defense-dominated team to an offensive-dominated team? Well, maybe. We'll see. We shall see. A staple of Alabama football has always been a tough defense a team that controls the run and a team that can run an offense. And, of course, Ricky Davis, the great teams you played on back in the early 70s. I know defense, uh, you took pride in stopping people. I think that's the, you know, just the Alabama and, and any winning winning program. You start with defense, and that's, you've got to win with defense. And that's what I think this Alabama team is going to have a good defense and does have a good defense. But one of the best friends of a defense is an offense that can control the ball, and that's what Alabama's been able to do today. William Watts kicks off once again. Off that one a little on the heavy side. In golf, you might say you hit that fat. John Hubert fields it at the eight. Gets knocked back, breaks free, and finally pushed out of bounds at the 23 by Mr. Watts. William Watts, the kicker, came down and knocked him out of bounds. Good run by Hubert that time. There's the numbers on the last scoring drive. Nine plays, 34 yards, and Michael Proctor converts. You know, you compare this Alabama defense with last year, and uh, it's really not fair because uh, Eric Curry, John Copeland, uh, top draft picks who will start for the Bucks and Bengals, respectively. George Teague will start in the defensive backfield for the Packers. Derek Oden will play for the Eagles, and Antonio London made the Lions. That's five guys out of the 11. They're all going to be playing significant roles tomorrow in the NFL. And there's a man who uh, is nicely over at Brown. But like Coach Stalling said, you can't replace those guys. You can't expect these uh, guys who didn't get those snaps as, uh, as to step in and perform at that level, but they might eventually. There you see the lay handoff there. Elbert Brown comes through, makes a nice play in the backfield. There's Jamian, Damian Jeffries, uh, John Walters, other people. Elbert Brown stepping in, trying to fill those big shoes of Eric Curry. Jeff Ligon uh, did a good job of holding on to the football. Ozell Powell now in the football game for the Tide. Whistles stop action. Ozell Powell is a freshman out of Greenville. Where's number 78? Big kid, 6'5", 275 pounds. Scott has fun, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Colorful tie. As we go down to Scott Hunter. I don't know if y'all noticed how well Elberett Brown is playing. Well, a few years ago, he was in a dance contest at the Alabama-Mississippi High School All-Star game on the battleship. My daughter, Betsy, who's a cheerleader, was with him. He won the contest. Well, I told him, let me show you where he, 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 she gets it. I showed him a couple of steps, and he said, Mr. Hunter, she's got it. You ain't got it. Scott, thanks. And that tie, uh, Rush Limbaugh would certainly love that colorful tie you're wearing today. We should tell you, Scott, Nikki Black, who's our statistician today, uh, belongs to your uh, daughter's sorority, Alpha Chi. As long as it's a family affair. Kendrick Burton has checked in for the Tide. Number 96. First look at him. Number 94. We'll check that. First chance we've seen Kendrick, a sophomore from Hartzell, who two years ago, according to the USA Today, was considered the top defensive line prospect in all of the country. Where's number 94? There you see him right there. 
right defensive tackle. He's charging forward, and there's Royal uh, with the pressure. And a face mask penalty on Elbert Brown. Andre Royal with the initial surge. Ozell Powell on the penalty. Good pressure that time, though, by Andre Royal, one of those outside linebackers for Alabama who used to be a defensive back who now has great speed. Here you see Randall dropping back to pass if you'll watch on the left side of your screen. There comes Royal. Can't quite make the play. Big number 78, Ozell Powell, though, kind of got his hand on the face mask. And there comes the flag. There's the penalty. He forgot to turn on his microphone, but nevertheless, we uh, saw the signal as we go down to Scott Hunter. Doug, you might have noticed number 95 in there, Kelvin Moore from Daphne, Alabama. That's a name, and that's a number you're going to see a lot of when Alabama goes to their pass prevent, their four rushers. So look for that name, look for that number, Kelvin Moore. The coaches really like him. Kendrick Burton is out of the game. Damian Jeffries back in for Burton. And Elbert Brown is back in for Ozell Powell. Second down and 11. It appeared that Mario Morse was lined up offside. There's a completed pass, so Tulane will probably take the completion and decline the penalty. Although the official saying he was out of bounds, so they'll take that. Mario Morse was clearly lined up in the neutral zone. That's Buddy Tevens. Tosses the hat. He lost his voice at halftime. Right really here now. All's quiet, about as quiet as you can get at Legion Field with 83,000 people. One of the new rules this year is the, uh, they can come over and they can penalize the coaches if they do too much talking or with the, uh, communicating with the officials. The pass was incomplete. We have offside on the defense. Five yards. Mario Morris clearly lined up in the neutral zone, so that's uh, five yards for the green wave and it's interesting you mentioned that new role with the coaches Ricky because uh, as we look at the last play remember Gene Stallings last year at the Sugar Bowl when he was chewing out the officials I remember that play where Derek Lassick had taken the ball right down to the one yard line there was a face mask call on Miami and Lassick gave the ball a little spin <laughs> turned out to be a, a big penalty at the time second down and six that was a close play on the sidelines the official was right there and said uh, the receiver didn't have control. Nunley, Brown, Ozell Powell all in the game. Completed pass and a first down. Greg Randall. Randall playing a great game, Doug. Watch him. He drops back here, just keeps his cool, waits and lets his receiver get into the open area, delivers a good pass, very catchable ball. Takes it out for a first down. Craig Randall really showing a lot of a lot of poise. As you said, went to Michigan initially, set out a redshirt year, then transferred last year down to Tulane and had to sit out the year there, but playing a great game today against Alabama. Sal is lined up behind the quarterback. He caught the last pass. First down and 10. Too hard that time. Jeff Ligon just couldn't hang on. Osmus now in the game. You see number 26 on the coverage. That's Michael Osmus, sophomore from Mobile. And uh, Osmus was a uh, key member of the specialty teams a year ago, getting some time now on the defensive unit. There you see him. Michael, 5'9", 178 pounds, earned a varsity letter a year ago, and the championship ring. We should say, should say the team that... Uh, Alabama knockoff in that Sugar Bowl. Miami opened up today with a 23-7 win over Boston College. There's the rush and the and Jeremy Nunley hammers the quarterback to the turf. Tulane trying to set up a screen pass that time, so the offensive line just kind of hit and release. That time Craig Randall, a little too much on the ball, over through the receiver. It's going to force a punt by Tulane. Third down and 10, and while we have a second, we'd like to remind you the announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by the University of Alabama. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this game without the written consent of the University of Alabama and the Alabama Sports Network is prohibited. 
Third down and 10. Craig Randall back to pass. Lots of pressure. Wide open was his tight end. Who didn't catch that one? Kevin Cunane. He caught two previously in the game, but not that time. And a good try by Randall that time. He's getting a lot of pressure. Watch the pressure coming here on him. Kind of throws the ball off of his back foot, but he does get it out there. Hits his receiver in the hands. Watch Antonio Langham come up and make sure that he doesn't hold on. You never know what somebody is thinking, but uh, you got to believe Mr. Cunane uh, heard some footsteps from Antonio Langham that time because uh, fake punt for Tulane. Mike Stay gets stopped well short. Not a well-executed fake punt. Chip Clark tossed it to the up man, Mike Stade, who was thrown for loss, so Alabama will take over in good field position. Danny Davis, a converted quarterback out of Memphis, playing on the specialty teams for Alabama, makes the stop. And a good play by Danny Davis, who stayed at home. Scott, what do you have? Well, a lot of people in the press box will take exception with Buddy Tevin's call right there, but frankly, I don't think it was wrong at all. It's a gutsy call, a good thing to try. Hey, you're a few points down, got to do something. I won't argue with it. The deuce in motion. Chris Anderson playing fullback. Horace Turner and uh, Chris Anderson, the backup fullbacks for Terrence Lynch. You might not think Chris is big enough to play fullback, but uh, believe me, he's bulked up and he's a tough runner. He can handle it. Here we see Gene Stallings. He's got Brian Bergdorf in at quarterback now again. Coach Stallings saying earlier in the week that he wanted to give both Jay Barker and Brian Bergdorf a lot of playing time today. That's the end of the third quarter. With Alabama on top by three touchdowns, 31 to 10. The crowd is very quiet at Legion Field. A moment ago, they were doing the wave. They're announcing the Miami-Boston College score here at Legion Field. Good look at the end zone as we go to this announcement from the University of Alabama. A cramp for a Tulane football player. That's Ruffin Hamilton, who's been in on several big plays for the Tulane defense, made several key tackles. He's trying to work out that cramp. You get dehydrated, and muscles start tightening up in the calf area. This is a tough time of the year. It doesn't matter how much you train and get into a game like this, and you just can't simulate in practice the adrenaline and everything that's going to be flowing in a game. So you'll see some of the players with cramps and in these early season games because it is so hot and here at Birmingham so humid. If you have to play in September in Birmingham, now is the time after 4 o'clock with the sun setting because it, uh, it's pleasant. Bergdorf running the show. Horace Turner in the backfield. Bergdorf looking for Kevin Lee. He's open. Made a nice cutback but couldn't snatch it. He had a touchdown if he'd have held on. He did. Nice adjustment by Kevin Lee while the ball was in the air. Lee was covered. There you see Bergdorf dropping back and he Wanting to go deep to Kevin Lee. Throws it down inside, and you'll see Kevin Lee come back inside the defensive back. Almost makes a great play. Good coverage by Willie Parnes, but just a great adjustment by Kevin Lee, but he couldn't hold on. Kevin Lee has had some big plays this afternoon. A look at Brian Bergdorf. Karen Lynch wasn't ready for that one. Tied offense not clicking at the moment. And again, not, not a lot of electricity in the stadium right now. Uh, I think uh, when you get the big lead, uh, the fans now are uh, sitting back, relaxing. They're not very loud, not vocal. Ryan Deal on to punt. Matthew Pine is the snapper, a very talented snapper, a man who rarely ever makes a mistake. Been holding down that job for three years now at Alabama. Deal with a terrific punt, way up, gets a terrific roll, and it's down at the two-yard line. That gets the crowd up a bit. Of 
one of the things you have to do if you're Alabama this time of the game, Doug, is, is not to just sit back. You've got to get better. It's early in the season. This game's pretty much under control at 31 to 10. But what they've got to start doing is Alabama has to start looking and getting better every play and not be content with just winning the ball game 31 to 10. I know that's one of the things that Coach Stallings and the, the remainder of the Alabama coaching staff want to, want to see this team do is not sit back and keep getting better every play. Laron White, number 51, back in. Along with Jeremy Nunley, Damian Jeffries, and Elbert Brown. That's the first team, you might say. Well, we mentioned early in the game, James Gregory had started but out with a knee injury. Laron White in there in his place. Laron, a, a red shirt freshman from Portland, Alabama. Crowd down in that end zone trying to make it difficult for Craig Randall and the two-lane offense to hear. Turning it up a notch. Nunley, Elbert Brown, Laron White are all urging the crowd to cheer a bit. It had really gotten quiet. A lot of people coming out today to watch Alabama start its defense of the national championship. There's the crowd. Randall turned to the official and he's urging. I cannot hear the official telling him to go to work. Two seconds on the clock. There's the handoff up the middle. And he breaks free. Gerald Sowell will go all the way unless he runs out of gas. Gerald Sowell will go 98 yards to Lane, scores a touchdown. That's one thing that'll quiet the crowd down. Wow. That was that same play, the freshman from Baker, Louisiana, who's been running right up the middle the entire game. It's been going nowhere. Randall waited until two seconds on the 25-second clock. Almost he, didn't get the play off. He really didn't. Inside handoff. Nobody touches him there. A couple of missed tackles. Good running. Pulls away from Will Brown, number <laughs> 17. And then, then it's just a matter of whether or not he's going to have enough steam to make it. I thought he was going to run out of gas at about the 25, but, you know, he got some good blocking. Bert Baldwin converts. Scott, what do you think? Well, guys, what happened on that play? Craig Randall kept turning to the official and telling him he couldn't hear. He wanted to stop the play. Well, finally he turned around at the third time, and he snapped the ball. The Alabama defense had stood up or started to stand up after his third time. He was asking the official. Bam, they snapped the ball, and the guy was gone. <laughs> Scott's rolled up his sleeves. He's getting into it down there, working up a lather on the sidelines. A little bit warmer down there than it is up in the box. 14 clock and it's a 14-point uh, lead. There's uh, Gerald getting congratulations uh, from all his teammates. Longest run of his collegiate career without question. 98 yards. Big kid. 242 pound freshman from Baker, Louisiana. <laughs> that came out of nowhere. That's how quickly things can turn around. And that has, uh, I think, uh, given the crowd a wake-up call. They seem to be a little more uh, into it now. Kind of sitting on that lead, taking things for granted. And here we are, 31-17, with lots of time on the clock. Bart Baldwin wears number five. He's the junior kicker. Been busy, kicked the field goal. David Palmer fields it in the end zone, and here he comes. The Duke breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle. Gets knocked out of bounds around the 27. You know, when they tried the fake punt, as you see the scoring drive, you know, both of their touchdowns, their first touchdown was a nine-second drive on the touchdown pass. And uh, That's, uh, you think he ran that in nine, nine he seconds? He ran 92 <laughs> yards in nine seconds. He's pretty fast for a guy 240 pounds. But that's the official tally. That's right. We're going to start uh, warming him up for the Olympics <laughs> in Atlanta. You know, after the fake punt that uh, didn't work, it was thrown for a loss, Alabama didn't take advantage, and uh, the game really could have turned into a route there if they'd have scored a touchdown. 
that it could have. And here you see a big play by the Tulane defense. You know, it's 31-14. You've got 14 minutes to play in the ball game. There's a lot of football left to be played. That time Alabama didn't pick up anything on first down. Chad Key coming back in. As you look at that front uh, three of Tulane, Michael Batiste. It's actually a front five. They play that 5-0 defense. That was Scott Hunter's tie, if you're wondering. Sherman Williams breaks a tackle, breaks free for a first down and more. The Sherman shake that time shook off a few tacklers. And Mike stayed number 15, the free safety for Tulane, over to make the tackle. Good run that time by Sherman Williams, kind of picking and choosing his, his hole, able to kind of slide through outside. Scott, what's going on? This is the time in a game when a back like Sherman Williams really can assert himself. Everybody else is getting tired. He's fresh. He can just run like the wind in a case like this. Look for him. 13 and a half minutes to go, fourth quarter. 31-17. Bergdorf back to Sherman Williams. Again, running along the right side. And let's give Roosevelt Patterson some credit for uh, opening a huge hole. You know, they asked Roosevelt Patterson the press guide, Ricky, who will be a surprise player in 1993? He says, believe me, you haven't seen the best of Sherman Williams yet. I think this year he will sprout up and step his play up to another level. Well, he's got a lot of, he's got a lot of uh, speed and quickness. You see him. He reminds me a lot of David Palmer, except he's a little larger. There you see him. He may have called Brandon Hamilton, number 34. Well, some of the Alabama people on the sidelines thought he went for the head. But there was no call. Staying on the ground, that's Chris Anderson, wrapped up quickly. Chris Anderson and right guard for one yard. Marcos Vila in on the stop, along with Jeff Dean, Jeff a sophomore Dean. out of Richardson, Texas. Marcel West wears number one from Niceville. Tommy Johnson's neck of the woods is checked in. He's in the slot. Chad Key, wide left. Pitch back to Chris Anderson. Again, running that right side. Tommy Johnson, the tight end blocking there. You, you get the feeling that uh, they like that right side with Roosevelt Patterson at tackle. Of course, John Stevenson is hurt right now, but uh, William Barger at right guard. You get the feeling they like that right side. Well, they do. Those guys are both, even with Barger in there. Barger's a three-year letterman and a lot of experience on the right side of the ball. Well, let's go down to Scott Hunter. Oh, that, that, I thought that was Scott that was dancing around there. I'm sorry. I thought he was ready to say something. 12-11 on the clock. Excuse me, Scott. You're looking like mascots now. Bergdorf. That is a lateral. So David better get on it, and he does, and he's thrown for a big-time loss of about uh, 10 yards. You know, David paused there for a second, then he saw all the defenders charging at him, and I think he realized, wow, this is a fumble. It was a live football. Cedric Thomas, who we've caught quite a bit, having a good game on the pressure for Tulane. And a good series there by the Tulane Green Wave defense, really asserting themselves, shutting the Alabama offense down, forcing the punt. Looks like Tulane may be going for the block. Ten men on the line. Will Urson is deep. Brian Deal. His last punt downed at the two. Will Urson fields at the 14. Looking for a wall, but not much of one. Ten guys up on the line. A flag down on the play. I think they're going to get Alabama with a face mask. John Tanks down on the tackle. He's a red shirt hey, freshman yards, linebacker. There you see Urson. 46 is Tanks. Could have been an illegal block. That's what the officials are going to call. A push in the back of one of the Alabama coverage men. So they'll step off 10 from the point of the infraction. Clipping on the return. First down and 10 after half the distance to the goal. The Alabama defense was properly dressed down after that 98-yard touchdown run. I looked over, and I saw the defensive coaches all over. So let's see what they do on this series. I bet there won't be another long run like the one before. 
Gerald Sowell is not in there, the young man who ran it 98 yards. And again, Randall asking the official for a reprieve. There's the pitch right. Student body right, and uh, he gets pushed back. His forward momentum will surely be up around the uh, four or five yard line. That was Hubert, John Hubert. He lost seven yards. Good penetration by Alabama's defense, getting upfield, forcing him in. There you see Sam Shade, number 31, Lemansky Hall, number 11. Shade holding him down. John Walters coming in, finishing him off. Again, Lemansky Hall urging the crowd to get vocal. And watch Randall plead his case to the official. There he is again. That's his right to do that. And there the official finally steps in. Calls timeout. You can read lips. This is I a can't great hear angle. A thing. <laughs> <laughs> it does get extremely loud in that end zone if you're ever on the field for any reason. And a lot of times we're down there as reporters. Uh, it is almost deafening in those end zones. It's a complete horseshoe down there in the sound coming from all sides just right down on him. Second down and 17. 31-17 the score. 10-23 to play in the fourth quarter. Crowd is quiet. But now, here comes the volume control. Being turned up a bit. Now again, if it gets out of hand, the official can ask the uh, go to Gene Stallings and ask the crowd to quiet down, but that's ridiculous, and it certainly won't happen in this case, although they have asked the Alabama defense to uh, motion to the crowd to tone it down. Coach Stallings probably not the happiest spectator in the, in the stadium right now. At 31 to 17, Coach Stallings having a, a great run at Alabama. This is his fourth season after that 0 and 3 start, his first year. Come back and won 31 of the next 34 ball games. Now again, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, if the official steps in one more time and deems the crowd is too loud, they can uh, charge a timeout to Alabama. Is that correct? Correct. Great play fake. Randall has the football, and he throws deep for Will Erson. Intercepted Tommy Johnson. I think he made a mistake there. Randall had room to run. He really did, but that was an outstanding fake, Doug, like you said, in a super football play by Tommy Johnson. There you see Antonio Langham, number 43. He and Johnson are roommates. But just a super play by Tommy Johnson. Stayed in position, didn't go for the fake. What's the fake here? Puts the ball on his hip and just watches. Has all day. Had some room to run. Sam Shade in good position, though. Made him throw it. And just a great defensive play by Tommy Johnson. Good coverage by both Johnson and Chris Donnelly. Bergdorf to Sherman Williams. Bumps off a tackler. Gets out of bounds. Gain of about six. Scott? Okay, I think you'll see two stands of the they got picked up after that 98 yard touchdown run. It's 31 17 game. Got a run. They got fired up right here in Alabama's position at the dark round. Yep. All right, some crazy fans. 10 10 to go in the fourth quarter. Torres Turner gets stopped quickly by number 92. Sean Jones. Sean is a sophomore out of Miami. This two-lane defense has gotten stronger, Doug, here in the second half. They've really, really played well, not allowing Alabama's offense to really sustain anything. That time, good penetration by Jones, getting into the backfield, making the stop. Bergdorf again in at quarterback. Kevin Lee goes wide right, the deuce left. Sherman Williams, Terrence Lynch. 
line up in that uh, pro set, if you will, behind Bergdorf. Bergdorf gets sacked. He's down. His knees are on the ground. That's Michael Batiste. Just kind of uh, like a sledgehammer, a wrecking ball. He did. He just came pushing through, ran into Taron Lynch, and pushes. Watch him push Taron Lynch. There you see number 54, a little game there, takes Taron Lynch, pushes him back into the backfield, and knocks Brian Bergdorf down. Great play by Batiste. Brian Deal has to punt. Will Urson calls for the fair catch at the 20. So, Tulane gets pretty good field position compared to the, uh, the two-yard line and where they were before back inside the 10. 8.59 on the clock. It's still 31-17. A wild melee. Tulane fumbles the football, and it's picked up by John Hubert, but Lemansky Hall will be called for uh, offsides. He clearly jumped the gun. He really did. Lemansky Hall, left linebacker. He's a little out of the picture here, but there you see Will Brown causes the fumble. Picked up by the Tulane player. Starts circling around left end. Will Brown not only makes the, causes the fumble. Side, defense, five yards. It's first down and five. Will Brown not only caused the fumble, but he got up and came across the field to make the tackle. Alabama's had uh, several penalties today that have hurt them. Various situations. But this is the opening game. Getting some of the mistakes out of the way. Hopefully. Eight and a half and counting. There's Randall. There's the man of the hour. Gerald Fowle gets brought down. It was first and five, and it'll probably be second and five, unless they give him a yard. Gerald Stowell, number 33, 240-some-odd pounds, running back, fullback. 98 yards camper just a few minutes ago. Brought it to 31-17. to They gave him four yards that time. It appeared his knees were down, but uh, he kept scampering along. The whistle didn't blow. Third and one. There's Sowell bowling forward. Alabama signals as if they stopped him, but the official says, nope, he's by the marker. It's first down. Scott? You might notice that Alabama's going with four down defensive linemen. A little bit of different wrinkle that Tulane hasn't seen. They're in a, what they call an over or an under stack, trying to guess with Tulane in their running game, trying to get more defensive linemen in the game to put more pressure on the quarterback and stop the running game. Seven and a half and counting in the fourth quarter here at Legion Field, where a capacity crowd is watching the tide against Tulane. There's the blitz. Randall was forced to throw it away. Sam Shade on the delayed blitz. Sam Shade, the strong safety for Alabama from right here in Birmingham. We know in a high school. Came in on the blitz. That time pressures Craig Randall. There you see Randall. There comes Shade up the middle. Kind of came from his outside. Ran right past the two-lane blocker there. Chris Donnelly, 21, in good shape on the coverage. Last. Go ahead, Rick. I was going to say Sam Shade, not only an outstanding player, but also a fine student in Tuscaloosa. Last year's uh, number one ranked defense nationally was not known for blitzing. They didn't have to because there was so much pressure up front with Copeland and Curry. Bill Oliver said uh, he may have to resort to a little more blitzing this year, and we've seen it today. Sam Shade there, and earlier in the game we saw a little blitzing. Timeout for the Green Wave. Randall goes over to talk to Buddy Tevens. Well, having a Copeland a Curry on your front really makes your defensive backs a lot better. Alabama's got tremendous defensive backs there. We see Jeff Rousey and Coach Stallings. Jeff Rousey with the headset on. He coaches the inside linebackers, talking to John Walters and Michael Rogers. But having a Copeland and a Curry really make you a better coverage group. And one of the things Alabama will have to do is compensate for the loss of those guys. We have a great tradition of quality and excellence. This university has been highly productive for a long time.
but it has never been better than it is today. The standard at the University of Alabama in everything we do is excellence. When the world wants to know about the state of Alabama, they come to the university. 7-16 to play in the fourth quarter. Craig Randall brings the green wave up. Second down and 10 after the timeout. Gerald Sal is lined up in the fullback slot. And again, a marvelous job of play faking. And picked off Chris Donnelly. Third interception of the day. Two for Tommy Johnson, one for Chris Donnelly. Good play by Chris Donnelly. Chris Donnelly is the free safety. He's playing center field. There you see him. He's dropping back. He's reading Craig Randall. He sees him turn and look. He sprints for the ball. That's just what he's supposed to do. Cuts over, makes the interception. There you see Lamansky Hall, number 11, who's in coverage. But Chris Donnelly started off at Vanderbilt, started up there for two years. When there was a coaching change, he was close to Watson Brown and decided to make the move to Tuscaloosa, and he's been starting for the last two years down here. Even with that 98-yard run for Tulane, Alabama still dominating in that department. Tommy Johnson, Tony Johnson, excuse me. Scott? Now we're at the point in the game, fellas, where conditioning kicks in. Where a well-conditioned, strong, good football team with seven or so minutes left in the game should begin to assert itself. So let's check out what kind of condition Alabama's in right now. Let's see how they do. Around the clubhouse turn, it's down the home stretch for the Crimson Tide. Bergdorf running the show as he has for most of this second half. Jay Barker started the football game and has had a good football game, but Gene Stallings wanted to get Bergdorf some playing time, and he had. Through the hands of Marcel West. Marcel is a freshman from Niceville. First look at him. Got outstanding speed, Doug. He's one of the fastest players on the Alabama team. I know the coaches would like to get the ball in his hands. We see Padraig Malone in there as well, another freshman. Hoderick was wide left, Marcel wide right, timeout to Lane. They burn another one. They were short a player. They only had 10 men on the field, so they called timeout. Bergdorf uh, only three out of nine for 23 yards. I know he's not happy with that, but again, this is the first time he's played in a while. Aside from practice, of course. But if you look back over the uh, the last few games of the 1992 season, Mississippi State, Auburn, Florida, and then Miami, Bergdorf didn't get any playing time in any of those games. So had a good spring, pushed Jay Barker, but Jay had a, a good spring and a good summer, and I don't think there's any question in anyone's mind in Tuscaloosa who the number one quarterback is, but in college football today, you, you don't need to be satisfied with just one. You better have somebody else in the wings that can come in and step in and do a good job, and that's how the Alabama coaches feel about Brian Bergdorf. Number 18 is Lorenzo Cole, a senior flanker man from Florence. Played at Bradshaw High School. Hoderick Malone, wide left. Like one-on-one -on -one man coverage. There's the shuttle pass to Chris Anderson, and again, defense well by Tulane. Sean Jones. Sean Jones has uh, made some nice tackles, and as you said, uh, the Tulane defense has stiffened up a bit here. They really have. That time at the play, Alabama likes Sean Jones, read it well. He's just a sophomore. You see Bergdorf coming back. There comes Chris Anderson cutting back inside. Flips it in. Sean Jones right there to make the play for a loss of a couple. And again, if that's batted down or dropped, that's an incomplete pass. So uh, Bergdorf, the draw to Tarrant Lynch. And again, the tide seems content and just uh, running the clock, keeping things up the middle. They have an injured player on the ground. Looks like another offensive lineman. We'll check the number before we give you the name. There you see Tarrant Lynch running the draw that time. Picked up a few yards. Looks like it might be so number 59, John Clay. He's a senior offensive lineman from Nashville. Stepping in, taking over for 
George Wilson, who's the only offensive lineman from last year's 1992 National Championship team that's not back this year. John Clay started out on defense, playing linebacker. They moved into offense a couple of years ago. There's Bill McDonald, the trainer with the little waist pack on. George Wilson, uh, we spoke to George a month or so ago at an awards ceremony in downtown Birmingham. Actually, it was the Sinkton Awards presentation. Fred Sinkton, a, a member of the all-century team at Alabama. Great person. And uh, George said he was, as John Clay walks off, George said he was so happy to be about 30 pounds lighter than he was as a player because on uh, his six-foot frame, he'd bulked up to about 275, and he said that's all his frame could carry. And they said he's jogging a lot and losing a lot of weight. It's funny, these linemen, after they uh, get done with their careers. There you see John Clay, 59. Looks like he might have taken a, a blow to the head. It he just kind of knocked him a little woozy, but he was off walking off under his own, under his own steam. So another tie drive stalls, and Brian Deal will kick again. That one appears uh, headed for the end zone, or at least Will Erson hopes so. It stays up, though. And the Tide uh, carried it into the end zone for the touchback. Matthew Pine, who's the snapper for Alabama. And Brian Deal, the punter. Pine is a young man who uh, enjoys not only snapping the ball, but then beating some of the uh, other defenders down the field. And a lot of times the coach is telling that he gets down too fast because uh, he snaps that ball and takes off. And, uh, and sometimes he uh, runs past it. He's a hustler, and Matthew Pine, I'm glad we're giving him a little credit because he does a fine job. Well, those are the guys that don't get any credit until something goes wrong, the snapper <laughs> and the holder. That's exactly right, and, and luckily in his career, there haven't been many bad snaps. Well, that's uh, the quarterback, Randall, looking for Will Erson, who has had a tough afternoon hanging on to that football or at least uh, pulling him in. Erson is the second all-time leading receiver as far as receptions in Tulane history. And Buddy Stevens has to be pleased with that man. Craig Randall, number three, coming in, starting his first college game. But I think he's had a super game, and it's something that they can build on at Tulane and look to the future with. Statistically, uh, three interceptions, uh, 98 yards passing, uh, certainly not the greatest statistics, but uh, he has, uh, as far as field generalship, uh, he's done a nice job in that play faking. Uh, he's really done a marvelous job with holding some of the uh, Alabama linebackers and defensive linemen in check. Over at Brown on the stop. Kevin Tingley on the carry. You see Randall with a quick draw there. Albert Brown comes through, makes the initial hit. And there's Jeremy Nunley, number 73, coming in to finish it off. Albert look. Brown, big guy, 6'5", 266. About the same size, not quite as tall as Eric Curry, but in that same 260 range. He shaved his head along with Jeremy Nunley and Lemansky Hall. They're shooting off now. Damian Jeffrey gets his first sack in 1993. There's Damian, All-State linebacker and tight end at B.B. Comer High School. A sellout at Legion Field today. Over 83,000. Chip Clark in to punt for Tulane. Standing right in the crown of the football field. Clark lets it fly. David Palmer calls for the fair catch at the 45-yard line. So it's 4.05 to go. We'll see who they send out at quarterback. It'll still be Bergdorf. I'm sure the Alabama coaches would like Brian to... Uh, Lead Alabama into the end zone and get a nice drive going because the last three drives have been three downs and out. A Brian Deal punt. Sherman Williams in at running back along with it looks like Taurus Turner at fullback. Sherman Williams. Going nowhere, that defense is getting tough. Scott, what's going on? Well, you can mark my words. Sometime in this season, Brian Bergdorf will have to come on and win a game. Nobody makes it in modern football through the season without their starting quarterback 
getting hurt at a critical time. So mark my word, whether it be knocked or here playing Tennessee or in Oxford or somewhere else, Brian Bergdorf will have to come on and play well. That's why Gene Stallings is ha having him or leaving him out there so he can get some experience at a critical time. Delane nearly jumped off. And Terrell Lynch again gets tackled by Ryan Deaton, the nose guard. He made the last two stops. Fired up a bit. Keith Cook also in on the stop. And again, all these young men for Tulane. Ryan Deaton is a... Keith Cook, a freshman. What's the defensive line here? Jump off. No contact made, though. They back up and get on. Get some penetration there. Stop Tarrant Lynch for a loss. Alabama, their percentage on third down conversions has gone down. Six out of 15. Sherman Williams. They're spreading him out, and he uh, converts the first down. Nice run for Sherman Williams. The Tulane defense trying to string that one out. Fisher Mark is just a little bit short. That's what the fans were upset they? with. About a foot short of the first down. Good block here again by Taron Lynch, 45. The pitch back from Bergdorf to Williams. Lynch leading him around. Knocks the man inside, allows him, and a good call by the official. Williams did step out a little short. Jeremy Pennington uh, was in at right tackle. He's a freshman from Vernon. And Brian again uh, doesn't get the favorable bounce that time. And Tony Johnson downs it. So again, the crowd has gotten quiet and uh, most of these folks, aside from the uh, 100 or 200 that goes to Tulane, most of these folks are going home very pleased. As you look at the fine folks from the Alabama Sports Network and Creative uh, Productions, there's a happy young man. Yes, the winning streak continues, he says. It goes to 24, the longest in the country. Next week, the Crimson Tide travel to Nashville to open Southeastern Conference play against Vanderbilt. The Commodores taking on Wake Forest this evening. There's a fumble. And it's recovered by Willie Gaston for Alabama. And again, that's the, uh, that's the man of the hour, Gerald Sowell. 98-yard touchdown run, and that time he coughed it up. Good blocking here by the two-lane front. Sowell gets some room. Cuts it in, and somebody just put their hat right on the ball. Willie Gaston making the recovery. Alabama takes over on the 34. Sowell has had a nice afternoon. It goes without saying he's over 100 yards, but uh, he won't like that. And again, thanks to all the folks who have helped us up in the box. Nikki Black, uh, our statistician, and uh, Gabby Bell, our spotter. Your old dad helping me out today. New running back in for Alabama. That's a freshman by the name of Brian Steger out of New Market. And Freddie Kitchens from Etowah getting his first action. All-state quarterback at Etowah High School. Hey, this guy can throw a baseball, they say, 98 miles an hour. He's a big guy. He's about 6'3", 200 pounds. And like you said, Doug, he's got a, a tremendous arm. Freddie Kitchens and Lance Tucker were the two high school uh, phenoms, if you will, that Alabama signed. All-state quarterbacks at their uh, respective high schools. There's Freddie. Big kid for a uh, quarterback. 6'3", about 225 pounds, true freshman. Oh, there's a turnover, and I think Tulane's gotten it right back. I do believe they have. Brian Steger and Freddie just couldn't hook up. Tulane football, 126 to play in this one. 31-17, and there's a good look at Gene Stallings, who will be happy with the victory, but certainly not happy with the execution, as football coaches always say. You must execute, and today the tide has not in certain critical areas. Just a mishandling that time of the pitch back. Good pitch by Kitchen, but again, both the quarterback and the tailback. This time last year playing high school football, and it's a little bit intimidating in your first game out here with 80,000 folks watching. Completed pass. Randall now over 100 yards for the afternoon. Completes it to John Hubert. 
Time's ticking away. Tulane has one timeout left. They do not appear to be in any sort of hurry, in any sort of uh, hurry-up offense. Getting home from Legion Field, always a lot of fun. Yeah, actually, it's not too bad. They have several ways to get out to the highway now, I-65, 459. I'm amazed that they're not uh, trying to move the ball any quicker. Almost an interception. That'll stop the clock, but uh, they let about a minute just uh, wind down off the clock. Antonio Langham only uh, needs five interceptions to become the uh, all-time theft king in Alabama football history, but uh, I don't think a lot of folks are going to be throwing his way this season. I don't think so. That time, Antonio trying to kind of replay the interceptions that he had last year against Florida and Auburn both going for touchdowns. Langham scored three defensive touchdowns last year. That's the first time in Alabama football history that a defensive player has done that. 38 ticks to play, and this one is official. There's Antonio Langham with his interception. Speak of the devil, Ricky Davis. Antonio needs only four to become Alabama's all-time interception king. Legion Field continues to be his domain. Just a great, great defensive back. Antonio Langham put on about 5 to 10 pounds over the summer. One of the things that people were concerned about him is he was a little light. There you see Gene Stallings, who knows a little bit about coaching defensive backs from his career with the Dallas Cowboys. There's Randall throwing it out. Just missed his receiver. Some type maybe miscommunication there, but Langham making the interception. He not only can intercept them, but he also knows what to do with them when he, when he gets it. 25 seconds to go. You know, the Alabama coaching staff wasn't uh, taking anything for granted. The uh, first teamers were all in there. Langham, Donnelly, Sam Shade, Tommy Johnson. Well, again, it's the, it's the first game of the year. It's 31 to 17. And you want to get your guys as much game, game experience as you possibly can. We see the clock winding down there. Alabama chalking up his first win of the 1993 season. There it is. The final, Alabama 31, Tulane 17. Both teams will now change handshakes. And for Tulane, this has to be a uh, moral victory, if you will, after getting beat 62 to nothing two years ago in Tuscaloosa, 37 nothing a year ago at home. Today they uh, can hold their heads up high, losing only 31-17. I think Buddy Stevens has got to be just ecstatic over the way 